from the Picture That Studio of Arizona UFC Contender Series 2023 Week 4. Carlos Prates versus Mitch Ramirez and the guy that put Izzy and Pereira. Will they get contracts? Let's find out tonight with the MMA Ho! Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to our Tuesday Night Contender Series reaction show. I'm looking off to the side. I see we have an ad on this screen. What the? How many people got an ad running? This is very delightful and exciting and glorious. Thank you, YouTube. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, we're going to react to the Contender Series. There are five fights on this card, and we're going to react to all of them. There's an unfortunate thing that I saw before we went live, ESPN. <sighs> Last week, they put the images up of the fighters. This week, they got lazy again. So we will have ghosts. That's all right. I'll tell you exactly what's going on. We get the live stats and all that fun stuff in the middle. But ESPN has failed us once again. Damn you, ESPN. Anyway, uh, we're going to react to the fights. It's going to be glorious. We're going to see if that guy that fought Pereira... And Adesanya and lost to them. He's going to get a contract tonight. It's a big deal. Six foot five, big guy. Will he get a contract? We'll find out. If you'd like to place bets on some fights this weekend, the NFL coming around, uh, NHL, NBA, all this fun sports, baseball going into the playoffs, go to mybookie.ag. The promo code is MMAHOLES for 50% match on your first deposit. It's mybookie.ag. Do it responsibly and get that bonus. MMAHOLES. Millions, we got a link in the description if you want to get. Uh, Blanchfield Panties will go check it out. That link, you support the fighters, and everyone that clicks on that link in shops, we get about four cents for every click. So, thank you for clicking that. Well, actually, we didn't get paid yet, but still, anyway, if you want to support the athletes, click the millions link in the description. ESPN Plus, if you want to watch the event that's happening tonight, the Contender Series, or if you want to watch any of the UFC fights, the Ultimate Fighter, all the UFC content, go to ESPN Plus. Link in the description down below for that. And I thank everyone that clicks that link and gets the content. If you can't get that, it's fine. Just hit the like button because I got you entertained and under control. I'll let you know exactly what's going on. For this Tuesday night fiasco, the Contender Series. How's everyone doing in the chat? Hopefully you are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. I saw a comment on, uh, we, we did a poll if you liked. I was curious, do you guys, are you guys interested in the Contender Series? And the majority, a slight majority, saying no. Oh, no. A lot of our community does not care about the Contender Series. I was actually kind of shocked. Actually kind of, up oh, with demonetized. Uh, uh, naughty me. Let's put in the monetization. Boom. By the way, tomorrow we're going to have Patrick Gavia live on the show. I don't know if it's Gavia or Gavia. We'll find out. But he's a documentary guy, and he does some great videos. I still got to watch the Tony Ferguson one. But tomorrow night we're going to have him on, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good conversation with Patrick. He is killing it on his YouTube channel. So go subscribe to Patrick Gavia. He's very good. All righty. No, we just give you a lot of content over here. So hit that like button, okay? I mean, I think it's a fair exchange. You hit the like, we keep on putting out the content. Here we go, fire up the Contender Series. So that is ready to rock. Boom, okay, that's good to go. Got the monetization in. So let me show you guys this over here, which I found very shocking. So on our community section, we put a poll over there. Occasionally we put those, are the lights out the Contender Series? It's completely dark. Oh, that'd be hilarious if they can't get the lights on. It's complete darkness. The world's most intense job interview, they're calling it. The Contender Series. Okay. Very epic. Listen, I don't care about the theatrics. All I care about are the fights. I want to see, do you get the contract, do you don't? I noticed last week that Dana White wasn't like Santa Claus. He actually declined. And said he just wasn't feeling it. So that's what I like. I, I want I want that that drama 
you know, are they in the UFC? Are they not in the UFC? That's what I d desire watching the contender series. So last week we bounced back and it was very entertaining. So we'll see how that goes. A contender series guy and Billy Goff got a win for us in Singapore. So that was cool. But look at this. I'm, I got to be honest with you. I'm a little disappointed. I am a little disappointed with the community, but not shocked. So, so far I got a, uh, about a K 1,000 votes on this puppy. And uh, hold on a second. There we go. I asked the people, do you care about Dana White's Contender Series? 42% say yes. 58% say no. Now, that really shocks the hell out of me. Like, what? Are we trolling? Do you mean to tell me 58% of our community does not care about the Contender Series? Like, I think the Contender Series is very good. I don't like tough. I think tough is nonsense. It's a reality show. It's like the Real Housewives where, where they fight. I don't know. Actually, get in the cage and fight. It's just garbage. But but this over here is pretty fun. You get to see if they're going to be in the UFC. You've seen Sean O'Malley and Jamal Hill win championships from the Contender Series. So I guess there are certain people out there. Like you think about this. There are other MMA promotions, right? You got your one FCs, your Bellator's, all that fun stuff. A lot of our community doesn't watch that. A lot of our community just wants to watch the UFC, and they don't even care about the Contender Series. They don't even care how they got there. They don't care about the regional scene. That's a big chunk of people. That's a that's a big chunk. So I'm curious if the UFC is aware of this, because you got to try to tap into that audience. They love your content, the UFC, but they don't like the Contender Series. That's a massive red flag. Massive red flag. Like if I put a tough thing up here, I guarantee it's even more lopsided. This is fascinating to me. So either people are trolling or people genuinely don't care about the Contender Series. So I'm going to ask you guys. I'm assuming everyone in the chat kind of cares. So you're here. So I'd imagine you guys care about this. But let me know. If you don't care, let me know what the reasoning is. Why? Uh, one person I noticed said that they uh, they just hope Dana White fails at everything. <laughs> and I, I couldn't help but laugh. I'm like, all right. And I'm thinking, do you like the UFC? I mean, that's a weird thing to say. People just want Dana White to fail. But that's 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 fascinating. You look beautiful tonight, Peter Quinn. Thank you. I got one of my MMA whole shirts on. I don't like wearing black shirts because it matches my chair, right? So now it looks like you just don't know where my fucking my my shape is. You have no idea. Like I could either either have chair shaped shoulders or my neck goes into my arms. Like it's a weird look. I don't like that. That's why I like to wear contrasty shirts, but I just put this one on because, you know, I got to I got to show off the merch. Anyway, yeah, it's weird. I don't like that. I try not to wear black shirts on here because it looks strange. Maybe I should just put a cover on my chair, like a pink cover, so everything, you know. Mots hates black. Um, no, I don't mind black, but blacks, let's be honest, blacks for fat people. You know, let's be serious here. You know, fat people wear black. When I used to go out, when I was a young man, I used to try to, you know, fish for ladies. Um, I I made it a point to wear shirts that were not black or white. And and women used to tell me that they were, you know, they'd rather see people wear shirts that were not black or white. Because everyone that's insecure wears a black or white shirt. But it's the most, it's the highest selling shirts, black or white shirts. It's weird. It's a weird thing. So if you want to stand out, single guys out there. Wear a shirt that's not black or white. Apparently that you stand out from other people. Uh, friend zones. I'm so skinny and malnutrition. Well, you better put some food in that body. Every goth emo person going to stab you. I mean, yeah, but I mean, do you really want to look like that? I, <laughs> no offense. My sister-in-law always wears black and, and she just, I don't know, that's her look. That's, that's her thing. No shame in her game, but I, I don't know. I think for guys out there. Stay away from it. I mean, unless, you know, you don't care, then go for it. Muscle bound helps. But if you're muscle bound, you got to wear a light colored shirt to show off all the muscles, right? If you're wearing a black shirt, you kind of suppress the muscles. So you got to wear like a lighter shirt. This is a weird conversation we got into, but, you know, this is what we do before we get into fights. We talk about some uh, silly things. So we're going to wait for these fights to get going here on this card. Yo, shout out to Casey. Look at Casey, gifted memberships. You just, you loving, gifting human being, you. Look at you. Come on, Casey. Who's going to get that membership? <laughs> B. 
Ding Dong Long. Wow. All right. Come on, Ding Dong. Show that emoji. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Casey. That was very really kind of you. And I'm, by the way, I'm not shaming people that wear black shirts. I'm just saying if you're a single person, if you want to hack the system, wear a different colored shirt. I'm just saying if you want to stand out. If you want to blend into everyone else, wear a white or black shirt and you look like everyone else. But if you want to stand out, that's what I'm saying. I do have a lot of black shirts. I don't hate on them, but if you're trying to get tailed, don't wear black. Last card, most dogs. Uh, this card, first four faves win and last fight dog wins. There we go. Funk Master Flay giving his predictions. Did, did anyone put bets on this card? Um, I, listen, I, I mean, unless I know the guy from the regional scene, I, I can get it, but... Um, you know, the only one that you might have some familiar familiarity with is Yusri Balgarao. I don't know why people are so hyped up on this guy. He lost to Izzy. He lost to Pereira. I mean, all right. I mean, he's not perfect, this guy. I mean, he's six foot five. I guess he's a handsome man. I don't know. Like, why are people so, like, like amped up? Yusri Belgaru, like, okay, he fought Izzy and Pereira, but lost. Like, what's the big deal? Like, I don't, like, if he's, he did beat Pereira once, I think. But he lost to him twice, and he lost to Izzy once, or something like that. I don't know, what's the big deal? Hey, this guy lost to Izzy and Pereira. Can't wait until he gets into the UFC to lose to them again? What? It doesn't make any sense. What's the, what's the deal with that guy? Went over 400 pounds, and I don't wear black or white. Let's go, Jay. See? Be confident with every whatever hand you're dealt. Wear that hand proudly, if that makes any sense. Just be, you know, be yourself for sure. Anything to hype up another Izzy fight? Yeah, like, is he anything good? I, I, listen, I gotta be honest with you. I'm a casual with this dude. <coughs> I'll say it. I'll say it. I'm casual. I don't know anything about this guy. I actually had to go back and look at the resume, and I was like, I am not impressed. Like, I don't. Like why? I mean, he's handsome, six foot five guy. It's the only thing that's that's really standing out. What if black makes him confident? That's fine. But listen, if you leave the house wearing black, that's fine. I have no problem with that. If you're looking to get laid, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Because what women when women see black, they think you're trying to hide something. <laughs> they think there's something. There's a fold somewhere. There's something that's just not pleasant that you're trying to hide. And everyone wears black. So you, you're kind of, you know what I'm saying? Save this for the second channel. I'm just trying to help, guys. I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, oh, by the way, Sinose, I do have your gift. Should we, shall we open it now or later? Shall we open it? I got laid in black. But gotten laid in black, that's, that's past tense, right? Are you still getting laid and still wearing black? That's the question. I have this right over here. And if you are, then go for it. Whatever works for you. This is from Sinosi. Let me know. It's got a little tear in it. I was like, can I look in this? But I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Do I, I'll open this later. <laughs> I'll open it at the end. By the way, Dana White is scheduled to talk to the media after this, so we will bring him on the program, and we'll hear what he has to say. I'm sure he's going to address Conor McGregor, and thank you, Classy Nasty. Appreciate you. Very good. Looks, did you re-up your membership? I think that's what you did. Thank you. Appreciate it. You are the man. By the way, members out there, I like you way better than anyone else in the chat. No offense. If you can't afford a membership, that's fine. But just know this. I like the members better, okay? Because I'm a whore. Um, anyway, what was I saying? I was saying something. Oh, yeah. So uh, Dana White is probably going to address Conor McGregor talking about coming back in December, I'm assuming. He's either going to put it to rest or give us a, a tasty something. I would imagine that's what's going to happen. If you want to hack Moss's system, then you wear what he says, or you just do what you do and be yourself. You could be yourself. Listen, if you don't want to get laid, I have no problem with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to help you out. Just trying to help you out. Actually, females actually said that to me. You're not wearing black. You're not wearing white. You know what I used to do? I used to wear, like, plaid and shit. I used to wear shit that would just stand out, you know? So, I don't know. Just stand out. Don't. I don't know. Be different. That's what I'm saying. Look, I'm a different human being. Be different. Be yourself, but be different from the pack. Stand out. Be your own person. Don't blend in with the crowd. Be an MMA hole, for God's sakes. I masturbate in black? That's hot, baby. That's good, because if you fucking hit the shirt, you have something to show off later in the black light, right? It shows off. It doesn't even have to be in the black light. You still know it's there.
All right, who's the first fight on this card? Okay, so Dylan Salvador versus Balaji Oki. It's quite the name, Balaji Oki, the Zulu warrior versus Dylan Salvador. So France versus Belgium to open up the contender series. Very exciting. I am I am not I am not happy with ESPN. In fact, I'm very upset with them. For them to not put the put the images up last week, get us all excited and then yank the images. Like it takes to we know you have their photos. Put them up on the freaking screen. Now I'm stuck with this hollow man looking shit. The Invisible Man versus the Invisible Man. ESPN. Salvador trains with uh, Cody Durden. Oh, is he the guy? I saw Cody put up a... Yeah, Cody said he trained with this guy for five years. I saw that on IG. I did see that. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, go Salvador. So I was... wear black, red or blue. Okay. I admit dark colors is my tongue or gold. Also, they're trying to get more interesting matchups in case Strickland and DDP fail. Cause no way tossing Khazmat or Boatizi. Okay, there we go. No way tossing Khams. I mean, I think they're on a crash course. Listen, they brought Izzy and, I mean, Bowen for a reason. That was all the hype. Him, oh, what is he going to do? If he works his way up, how would Izzy fare against a heavy grappler, good wrestler like Bo Nickel? Thank you, Sonosi. Appreciate you. You are officially... You are officially the top dog of the Contender Series. Dog! Come on, baby! The top! Thank you. Hello, fucktard! How you doing? Who made uh, me a guy pal? Thanks, Casey Jones. I couldn't have done it without you. Gozerian, are you freeloading? I'd still love you, though. If you're a member, that's freeloading. That's fine. As long as I see that belt next to your name, I don't care how you claim that belt. I still prefer you over those other people. Are you tr are you into prize picks? Masi, are you into prize What is prize picks? I don't know what that is. Prize picks? Explain. What does Izzy do if he beats... If he beats Do and Strickland, wait for Pereira again? Well, if Pereira... If Pereira finds a way to win up a weight class, guess what we're going to watch? So, yeah, I, I think another Pereira fight is inevitable at some point. I think I think those guys are going to fight for a 14th time. All right, we got Bolaji. Bolaji. Whoa. He's in the cage. Let's go to the tail of tape really quick. Okay, Balaji 5'10", Salvador 5'9", 155 for both guys, 27 to 30 years of age, Salvador the older one, 69 inch reach for Salvador, 73 inch reach for Balaji, Orthodox Balaji, Salvador is the South of Paw. Salvador is the South of Paw. Cantare. Whoa, oh, oh. That is very discouraging that more than half our community doesn't care about the contender series. I might be wasting my time. I would watch it with or without you guys, though. I gotta be honest. Wonderful, this is wonderful. one thing I'd watch either way. Thank you, B Man, for the 201. Appreciate you. Hacking the system here. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, listen, better than Daddy Cowboy, right? There we go. Here we go. Top dog. Here we go. Thank you, B Man. Thank you, thank you. I care too, Silver Crow. Like I said, I would watch it whether I'm not streaming or I'm streaming. I would watch this either way. I'm a fan. Okay, right off the bat, Oki going with the body shots. A kick upstairs by Salvador. So, yeah, of course, I'm going to root for a Cody Durden teammate. Why not? Salvador having a good time. A little grin on his face. Oki's scary looking, though. He's got the Cisco hair. Dye blonde. Let me see that dog. Whatever happened to Cisco? Left hand coming in by Oki. Body shot, Oki. Man, Salvador punches in the pocket. The left hand coming in. Inside leg kick, Oki. Oki with a very aggressive start with his striking. Leading the way with 7-3. to three. Catches the leg. Falling to the ground is Salvador. And Salvador gets back up. Oki greets him with a flurry of punches upstairs. 
Salvador seemed to block a few of those, and then the body shot comes comes in. Midget Brock Lesnar is the referee. Haven't seen him in a while. He is a very strange-looking ref. Nice inside leg kick by Salvador that followed the right hand by uh, Oki. Oki to the body with the left. Inside leg kick again. Salvador, beautiful one-two by Oki coming in. Oki with the right, straight to the face of Salvador. Salvador eating him here. Who do I... I mean, let's be honest. I don't care who wins. Of course, I would root for, you know, teammate, Mr. Jordan. Oh, nice counter left hand by Salvador. But I got no skin in the game. Salvador resets back to the middle, walks through a lay kick, and gives a lay kick of his own. So Salvador unfazed by the strikes of Oki. Oki looking to really land hard shots, and Salvador kicks him to the body, then a left to the body by Oki. We're in the first round, first fight, contender series, with 2.46 on the clock. Oki throwing the jabs out to the face of Salvador. Salvador walking through and hits him with the inside leg kick. Mini Brock Lesnar watching from the side of the small cage. As Salvador moves in, Oki steps back with the right hand, backs up from a left, tries to counter him with a left. Beautiful right hand, body shot coming in. Oki with the combination having Salvador hurt. To the cage goes Oki. Flurry against the fence. Oki letting him go. Body shot drops him to the liver. And dude, stop that shit. Bro, stop with that shit. Mini Brock Lesnar had a little brain for it. My man was down from that dude. Couple of insurance shots. Balaji Oki with the carnage in the first round. I mean, come on, ref. When Oki dropped him with that liver shot, there was no defending. There was no fighting back. He was done. It was over. He was down on his knees like, please do not hit me anymore. Man, that was beautiful. What a flurry. And we've been seeing a lot of liver shots lately. People have been, oh, that left to the liver. Actually, he did, he did one flurry. There it is. Boom. Drops down. I mean, <laughs> he was face first into the mat. I guess the ref had a bad angle. Left. One, two, three. Three, three unnecessary shots. Why not? Beautiful job. You know this kid, the Zulu warrior, 100% getting the contract. <laughs> Little insurance activity there. Oh, boy. To these knuckleheads that are saying they do not like the Contender Series, this is what you're missing. This is what you're missing, man. 42% know what's up. 58%, I mean, massive casual activity. If you, If this is your first night... Of enjoying the Contender Series? Well, strap on, baby. Come on, baby. Strap in, strap on. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Tuesday night, we're seeing carnage. It's beautiful. Fighters are learning uh, one body shot is all it takes. You, dude, the body shot, you, listen, easier on your hands, right? And it's almost like ever since Bare Knuckle came in, you know, and we were having some of these guys on. They were talking about it. Like, you keep punching a guy in the face with no gloves on, you're going to break your hands. Right? If this guy's not going to go down, you're constantly battering that skull. You know, your hands are just going to take a beating. Got to gotta mix it up. And, and those body shots, man, you find that liver. Easy victory. Fast pass. To your hand getting raised. Dana White will definitely give this kid a contract. Beautiful body shot. Love it. The Contender Series is awesome. These guys want to finish. That's another thing. Yeah, like like when you're watching the Ultimate Fighter, yeah, these guys are looking for a win, right? But not necessarily a finish because all they got to do is keep winning and they move on in the tournament. In the Contender Series, you finish, it's almost a lock for a contract. You go to a decision, it's not a lock, right? So, I mean, that's... A, oh, yeah, this is beautiful combos. I love the way he was so patient, too. When he was walking forward... He was just looking. It's like, okay, that's open. That's open. Smooth striking. Love it. Oh, that was beautiful. Broke the man. Poor, oh, well, Cody Durden. Your, your dude's got to get back to the drawing board, board, man. 
Tough break, man. Got hit in the liver. Tough guy, man. He he ate a beating, but that liver shot put him down. Let me see that fall. Beautiful. Boy, we love carnage here on the MMA holes. We love it. There's nothing better than Tuesday night carnage. I wish the Contender Series was all year round. If it was all year round, there would be a lot less people getting contracts. Laura looks best in green. You liking it, huh? Yeah, she's got, it's like a little luck of the Irish look going on. She's a pretty girl, man. Like, think about it. She's, she's in her 40s, and she's still holding herself together. Very impressive. Very impressive. I want Sanko on my face. Wonderful, wonderful. Remember this guy's name. So, Balaji Oki. Remember the name from Belgium. Very solid striking. Another lightweight. Dude, I mean, he, I just, this division, stupid. Lightweight is, there was a time where I could debate you guys. I thought Bantamweight, um, I'm trying to think of another weight class right now that you can really, I mean, not much really. Bantamweight's the only other weight class where I can make good arguments, but um, lightweight is, has pulled away, man. It's just, it's stupid, man. And these guys coming out of the Contender Series, they're just getting scarier and scarier. Uh, 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 uh. Dude, when a fighter goes down from a body shot, a ref will usually let a couple more shots land so it's conclusive. Not that uncommon, buddy. Bro, when you get hit in the liver, you have to defense you have to defend yourself intelligently. Okay? He was not defending himself. He gave up. He was on his knees. His face was literally pushed into the mat. There was no like blocking shots. He was literally down, like, oh my God. My body completely shut down. If the ref was on the other angle and saw that liver shot, he would have dove in there and stopped that shit. Okay? My man just gave up. Ate three unanswered shots. I usually love, you know, let him go, let it go, give the fighter a chance. In that position right there, any intelligent human being would have known that that fight is over. The ref was just in the wrong position. If he was in the right position, he would have stopped it right away. He just was on the wrong side. So listen, leave leave the, the commentary to the uh, the professionals, okay? Thank you. Uh, Laura's actually in her late 20s. What? That's fake news. But she does. She looks good. Listen, Laura's doing... She's playing the game. She got the fake breasts. She got the Botox going. You know, she's, 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 she's playing the game. I respect her hustle. I respect her hustle. She's keeping it together. I guess Laura... Does Laura Sanko have kids? I would imagine she does, right? Does anyone know if Laura has kids? I rely on you only for MMA information and comments. I mean, two joints, I, I don't blame you. Best in the biz. Seven years strong. I know everything about every martial art. I know everything about every rule. I know it all. Yeah, does, you don't think so? Yeah, I didn't. I never. Does Laura Sanko have kids? Someone, someone do some research for us. Get to the bottom of this. Does Laura Sanko have kids? I mean, she's married. She puts mayo on her PBNJ sandwich for her kid. Oh, my God, bro. I don't care how attractive you are. Do not eat mayonnaise in front of me. Don't do it. You're immediately a skivats. You're immediately the most disgusting human being in the world. <laughs> Get away from me. Laura has a son named... Oh, here we go. Burke Edward Sanko with Nathan. The couple... <laughs> how'd you put... First child was born on 20th, December, 2013. And Mary, he's got the whole story. All right, so we got... Thank you, little seal. Thank you. If you like mayonnaise, you're just a... You're an animal. I don't know what to say. You're an animal. I know a lot of people like it. Just a bunch of fucking filthy animals. Mayonnaise smells like ass. It tastes like ass. It looks like pus or jizz. It's the weirdest condiment. The weirdest thing. But very popular, especially with Americans, right? It's popular with the Brits too, right? They love mayo, right? British people put mayo on a lot of stuff. What the fuck are wrong? What's wrong with you people? She cheated on her husband with Krause. That's true too. That's right. Whoa, look at this. Oh my God. I'm watching this dude shadow box Chandler Cole. What the? F okay. So here's his topology picture. Chandler Cole, the hammer. 
My man is, he does not look like this anymore. Dude, he is huge. They, they have him as 264. Yo, he is tremendous. I'm rooting for this guy. I, I'm a sucker for a big sloppy dude. Chandler Cole, let's go, man. Where's he from? From Virginia. And he's fighting Thomas Peterson, who is 6'1". He's a big boy, too. He's 264. He's, he's a big fella coming in here. Yo, Chandler Cole. How tall is this guy? Oh, he's five. That's why. He's 5'10". Dude, this guy is 5'10", and he's at the limit. He was in the Contender Series before, apparently. I don't remember him. He was in PFL. Don't remember that. When was this guy in the Contender Series? Man, I don't remember him at all. PFL. Huh. Was he in the Contender? Am I, am I seeing things? Oh, he was in the Ultimate Fighter. I don't watch that. I don't watch the Ultimate Fighter. That's where he's from. I'm like, how is he in the UFC cage? Anyone watch him in Tough? I don't watch that show. Yeah, he's in Tough. Okay. I'm like, yeah, why don't I remember this guy in the Contender Series? Because he was in Tough. That's why. Okay. We'll see what this guy. Chris Barnett's brother. Yeah, he's got a Barnett build. All right, he's walking out now. Chris uh, Chandler Cole. Chandler Cole is the first to walk out. Amanda Nunes is friendly with him. Amanda Nunes. That's what she has to say about him. Hey, can you guys hit the like button? Did you guys do that yet? Uh oh, he was on Nunes Pena. That's why she's talking. Now it all makes sense. He's got a tattoo inside he ear. You don't see that much. He's got a tattoo inside his ear. Huh. I see a cauliflower ear. There's a tattoo in there. Which ear? He's got a very fancy cauliflower ear. It's, it's, he looks like he has two ears. Nine first round finishes. Okay. I like it. N yeah, Nunez is the coach. Man, I I didn't I didn't watch that season. Uh, we tried watching McGregor season, the last one. He probably eats a lot of mayo. Yeah, I mean that's. That is a product of a lot of mayo. Miracle Whip. Either. I can't do either, and No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, here comes Thomas Peterson. Thomas Peterson, another big boy. He's punching himself in, in his face on the way in. Always found that interesting. When You know when fighters do that? They take their gloves and they just start punching themselves in the face on the walk. Looks like his dad's in his corner. That's kind of cool. Pretty cool. Either that's his dad or Bill Murray. I'm not sure. But he gives him a big kiss on the cheek. Real meh. All right. Oh, man. This guy looks a little nervous, man. Thomas Peterson, the train. He's a... he. Wow. He's a big favorite. Minus 750 favorite is Thomas Peterson. Oh, boy. So Chandler Cole, a plus 470 underdog. My goodness. Mayo on your eggs was the reason why I don't like mayonnaise. Fun fact. Yeah, that combination. It was like an egg salad. That was the origin story of my phobia of mayo. It is disgusting. My dad used to make it all the time, slop the mayo on there. And now I get like violently ill if it's in, if it's in my presence. It's literally my kryptonite. You put a necklace of mayo packets around my neck, I would literally crumble to the ground. Miracle Whip is the... Oh, can we stop talking about this? This guy looks exactly like Tai Tuivasa. Are you saying Peterson? Or which one? Which one do you think looks like Tui Vaza? All right, we're going to get ready. Let me throw this tail of tape up before they take it off. All right. So we got Chandler Cole versus Thomas Peterson. I'm rooting for Peterson. I want to see that underdog. Big sloppy underdog get the win. So I'm going to be a little biased here. I'm trying to fix this graphic. Come on, this graphic. Stop moving. All right, here we go. 6 1, Peterson, 5 10, Cole, 264 for both boys, 28 inch reach. Our age, excuse me, for Peterson, 28, 28 age is Cole, 72 inch reach for Cole, Peterson, 74 inch reach, South Park, Peterson, Orthodox, Cole. I got to read it quick because these motherfuckers, they just pull it on me. They don't wait for the mystical. They should know better. They should know I got the finest reaction show on the internet here. 
Nice kick to the body by Cole. Cole is fun to look at. I like him. He's an, he's very fun. Wow, Cole is slinging leather around outside leg kick. Hugh Peterson just taking his time, moving in. Yeah, I'm I'm all about Cole then. Cole, yeah, we need to get this guy. His pants are barely slaying, staying on his body. Yo, Cole is tagging him with right hands, and Peterson just eating it like it's nothing. Whoa. How does my man Cole have that cardio? Dude's a big boy. A lot of things are moving on him. Cole backing up as Peterson's trying to walk him down, use that reach, throwing the jab in there. Oh, shooting him for the takedown. Peterson, Cole trying to stop it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He almost got it. Cole's hopping and now down to the ground. Ba Boom. I felt that from here. Cole is on the mat. Peterson on top. Now Peterson has a big opportunity with four minutes left in the first round. Come on, Cole. Get back up, buddy. Get back up. You could do this. Peterson holding him down very strong. Peterson's like, I don't want any of that stand-up smoke. It's kind of weird, huh? The bigger guy, taller guy, going for the takedown, hits him with an elbow. Cole just eats it right on the chin. Cole is just trying to do whatever he can to get back up. He's got a 300-pound man holding him down. Elbow. Cole looking to get back up. This guy's pants aren't going to stay on. There's no way. He's got no ass to hold him up. Yeah, Peterson just pants him. That's the move. Just pants him, baby. I mean, he's almost there. Cole is still trying to get back up, but Peterson now sitting on two legs. Peterson hits him with the right. Uh, Peterson, I mean, I, man, uh, man. I don't see much... Uh, optimism for Cole right now. Peterson's draped over him. He's just holding Cole down. Look, at <laughs> he's it's it's pretty cool. It's pre <laughs> it's a weird sight. I'm looking. At. I don't know how to really describe it. It's like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's just being held down. He just can't get back up. Lefts are coming in by Peterson. Peterson's still holding Cole down to the ground. Two forty-five on the clock. Cole is stuck on the mat. Ass to the mat. Back to the cage. As Peterson's holding him down. A left coming in, right coming in by Peterson, and Cole cannot get back up. Peterson doing some good work here. Keeping my man down, just laying on him, and just trying to stay active. Let, left coming in by Peterson again, and Cole slips out through the side. He's back up. Let's go, Chubby. To the body. Cole comes into the face. Cole going crazy over here against the fence. Beautiful knee by Peterson. Then Cole grabs the leg, tries to go for a takedown. Oh, my God. He got up. He's like, what? Went crazy, but Peterson hits him with the knee and the clinch. Love this. Oh, trip. Takedown by Peterson on top half guard. This is what I'm saying. This is why we need women's heavyweight division. Dude, even if the fight sucks, it's just so much fun to watch. You know, just a lot of movement going on. Even with nothing, nothing happening, there's movement going on everywhere. So now you got Peterson on top. Cole stuck on the ground. It's a bad spot. Bad spot for Cole. Fantastic spot for Peterson. Peterson puts the forearm in the face of Cole. Cole's face is sideways. Now he puts his big bear hand on his mouth, covers the breathing, and hits him with an elbow from the top. Another elbow from the top. Another one coming in from Peterson. Peterson sitting on that leg and driving down the ground and pound. Cole's trying to push off and get back up, but he cannot. Peterson on top with 120 left. Everything that Cole hit him with when he got back up didn't do anything to Peterson. Peterson completely unfazed. Now Peterson's going for the right arm. Trying to break the arm of Cole. Cole's right arm is extended. And rights are coming in from the top. Elbows are coming in by Peterson. Peterson dominating. Cruising through this round. Cole has one minute or 56 seconds to just survive and hope for a different second round. Cole protecting the face. Peterson just grinding on him. Big boy on top. The way Cole is spread out on the ground, just everything is just going in all different directions. Elbows from the top again by Peterson. Peterson in con complete control here. 35 seconds. And Peterson landing from the top. I could sm it, it smells like mayonnaise here. Is there? Did these guys eat mayonnaise before this fight? It's going through my TV. I feel like there's an intense smell of mayonnaise right now. 20 seconds. Elbow from the top by Peterson. Peterson still in control here. More elbows from the top. Peterson cruising. The big favorite in control with 10 seconds left. Looks like, oh, nasty left hand right on the face. And Cole turns his head to the other side. He's like, I don't want any more of that. Three seconds, two seconds, one. And Cole has survived a very tough round. Peterson did a fantastical job. Okay, Cole gets back up, trots to the corner. And we get ready for another round. 
I can smell DC's nip, nipples getting hard from the takedowns. Dude, that slammed down to the ground. I mean, I'm sure they felt that. Like 600 pounds slamming to the ground. When I was doing some of the regional fights and the big boys would get in the cage, dude, like the cage would like like shake and dude, it was nuts watching some of these big boys get in there. So I could only imagine with these guys. I tell you, Cole's a dog. I mean, he clearly lost that round, but he's a dog. He got himself back up at one point. And my my concern is his power is nothing. Like Peterson can eat a shot. Peterson has only eight professional fights. And looks pretty good so far. All right, what do you guys think of the big boys here? Herzog warning the fighters to get behind the line. I like that. Tell them to get behind the line. He's not, these fighters aren't listening. Get behind the line, guys. They're, they're dying to get to the center. Here we go, round one. So Cole wanted to get to the center first, and he finds himself there. Peterson greets him with a right hand. So 450 on the clock, Peterson versus Cole. Very enjoyable contender series once again, as we have a novelty fight going on here. Cole with the outside leg kick. Yeah, we need more guys looking like Cole in the UFC. I don't give a shit about muscle. We need like normal, like every, like when you go to the community pool, you see Coles walking around. You don't see Brock Lesnar's. Oh boy, here we go. So Peterson went for the takedown. Cole says, let's try the guillotine. That's not going to work. And now Peterson's on top with 422 left. All right, that's it for Cole. Either Cole gets pounded down for four straight minutes or Peterson finishes him. I don't think Cole's going to get back up. I know that's pessimistic, but I just don't see much of an opportunity. Peterson is on side control, and Cole's about to... Oh, boy. This is not good. Not good, guys. Watching pro wrestling is like that. Can't hear the commentary. Just the slams. Yeah, I kind of wish UFC... Oh, boy. Oh, that's it. That's it. Cranks the left arm. Peterson said... Uh, he put him out of his misery. The mouthpiece falls out of the mouth of Cole. That's a tough loss. He had a chance in tough. He had a chance in the contender series, but he was put up against a bigger, better guy. And Peterson, we got a carnage in the second round. Probably going to see another contract. Here we go. Carnage! Lick the carnage! Embrace the carnage! Go on a date with carnage! Vote for carnage! Make babies with carnage! Play jokes on carnage! Masturbate with carnage! Ejaculate the carnage! Propose to the carnage! Enjoy pancakes with the carnage! Celebrate the carnage! There is not one person in the chat that wanted Peterson to win, and nothing against Peterson. It's just Cole had the look. Like, you would not forget a guy like Cole. Unfortunately, it wasn't his night, and um, Peterson was way better. So the big favorite getting a second-round submission as he cranks on that left arm and, and quick tap. Peterson dominated. So like I was saying before, oh, man, yeah, that arm, that would have been bad if he didn't tap. Um... I wish the contender series, I wish the pay-per-views. I mean, we pay a lot of money for the pay-per-views. Uh, we, we, we're we constantly paying, you know, for ESPN+. Plus. Just give me the broadcast without the commentary. I would love to hear just the sounds of the cage. And if you guys are watching your favorite reaction show, The MMA Holes, any reaction show, it would be nice to have the luxury of hearing your favorite show and hearing the actual strikes, you know? Where you're not hearing the nonsense of the DCs and, you know, the bias commentary or whatever. Or the intellectual breakdowns of the fights. Who wants that? <laughs> Who wants that? Cole failed us. He did. He could have been the people's champ. He failed us miserably. I'll never forgive him. I have a feeling this contender series is going to be a quick, uh, quick night. Well, right now we have B-Man as the top dog with the 201. We had a couple of gifted memberships. I appreciate you guys. When the Contender Series is over and we listen to who gets the contracts, we'll have Dana White on the stream. And then we'll open up Sonosi's gift. Cole contract would be a cheeseburger. Peterson wins. Yeah, $100. Wait, how? Wait, you won $100 or... You won $100 on a Peterson win? Is that what you're saying? How much did you bet for that 100 Because he was a massive favorite, if you bet. The pandemic fights were like that. We could hear all the flesh on flesh. Well, that's because there's no crowd. So you could still hear... You could still hear... Um, if you're listening to the broadcast, you could still hear the banging and the cracking. You just hear their commentary. I want it just... 
just the sounds from in the cage. I don't want their commentary. I don't think that's... I think a lot of people would do that. I think people that, even if they're not listening to a fight reaction show, you know, maybe they just don't want to hear the commentary, just want to hear the fights. Had to be a prop bet. Yeah, submission in second round. Hope I get the membership. You got a membership. You got a membership. You got a membership in Marie. Bend over and take that cucumber. Snow bunny, honey. Today I had my consultation, guys. I had my nut consultation to sterilize myself because I'm too fertile for this world. I had to say it was very weird. Very strange. He showed me the procedure. It was an odd procedure. He was grabbing my balls. It was just strange. I had a man touch my balls today, guys. Very strange. But it's it, it seems like it's going to be quick, not too painful. It's weird. It's weird. Anyone in the, in the chat got that? Can anyone relate to me? Or, we, or am I the only guy around here? A little snip snip. Uh, what about the ear? Any update? The ear, the ear. Uh, huh. What are your update? I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? Big fan of the MMA holes watching all the way from the... Yo, Philippines! Let's go, Jack! Wonderful, wonderful. Let's go. Let's go. The skin? The ear skin? Why? I don't know why I'm not... Hmm. Ear skin. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I don't know what it is. Got a couple of bags of frozen peas for recovery. Yeah, I'm going to have to ice that puppy. They say in a couple of days. But you got to be careful because once you get the snip snip, okay, you have to make sure all the semen's gone. So you got to like, you got to let the semen, you got to let the dragons loose a lot. Go back, get tested over and over again. You can't just be going back to business because you could still get them pregnant. It's a weird thing. So it was a weird conversation I had today with my doctor. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. You need a proper funeral for the nuts. I got to be honest. I understand it's like an easy process, you know. It's just, it is weird, man. So it's a weird thing. He's, he's telling me how it's done. He's, there's no incision. Like, it's weird. He's telling me, like, he's pulling a tube out of my nut. He's cutting it. There's, like, a, a cauterization and separate. I'm like, don't tell me, bro. Don't, just don't tell me. I don't want to fucking know. Maybe you guys don't want to know, but I'm going to tell you guys. If I got to hear it, you got to hear it. It's weird, man. Find a hot nurse. I don't know, man. I don't know what I want in this. I don't know if it would be better for a guy or a girl to be doing this to you. I think I'd rather the guy do it. I don't know why. It's like the first thing he said to me when I walked into the office, he's like, you're all done, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm getting older. I got two. I'm good. We're cutting it off. He's like, you sure? You sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. And then he went on to the, you know what we're going to do. No, they don't knock you out, bro. Like, I'm like, yo, take me out. <laughs> but it's like a 10, 15 minute process. Like, it's technically a surgery. But, um, you know, they're going <laughs> to. I'm going to be awake. It's weird, man. But I have a friend that did it. My neighbor did. They say it's not a big deal. They're like, it's, it's, it's honestly no big deal. Walk into the snip snip, manhood over. My, by the way, it's not a castration, guys. And you know what? It says it in, it says it in the fucking brochure too. I'm like, what do people think this is? Like, I honestly didn't know what it was. So I understand why people were like, oh, you're not a man anymore. No, you're still shooting loads, guys. You're just getting rid of the little semen. You're getting those guys out of there. Those guys are not going anywhere. You still got your balls. You still look exactly the same. That's why I wanted a, uh, a fan. A sold out crowd to walk out that tunnel, blow the roof off this place, and look over and see my son like, wow, dad. That's you. And see the look on his face. Wow, dad. Fuck. Wow, dad. <laughs> you made me feel so wow, proud. Dad, dad cowboy. It's a good song, for us. You made wow, me feel so proud. Dad cowboy. <laughs> That's what I need right now. Don't cry, Daddy Cowboy, don't cry <laughs> You make wow. me feel so proud Can she look on his face? Daddy Cowboy Wow, Dad <laughs> Wow, Dad 
Call me Caitlin. <laughs> uh, oh, God. For all the men who got it snipped. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I know. I'm probably going to cry. I, may, I might cry during this. I don't know why. It is a weird thing. It's a weird process. I'll give you that. It is weird. I know it's like a simple procedure, but it's odd. I don't know how I, I even told Jess. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this anymore. I'm trying to be a man about this, but I feel like Daddy Cowboy. I do. Thank you for being a top dog, and thank you for the comfort donation. I appreciate I'm going to need that Daddy Cowboy song. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be a trans. <laughs> I'm going to show up the stream after in a dress. It's weird. It is weird. Uh, I agree. After the nuts, don't think about boobs. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. Not bad at all, really. Yeah, that's what everyone tells me. Everyone tells me it's really not a big deal. My neighbor got it done. I didn't really talk to him. Jesse spoke to the neighbors. It's a weird conversation. But my buddy, got, I'm going to text my buddy and say, okay, tell me, tell me, what do I, what do I got to look for? They go shave your nuts. You got to shave your nuts for this. Come in properly groomed. I'm like, what's happening here? What's going on? <laughs> I bet when you were thinking about a contender series reaction show, you didn't think we were going to be talking about ball carnage. <clears throat> do a trade chop uh, for the stem cells. I do need I need those in my shoulder. You're saying you can still throw a fastball. Yeah, I can throw the fastball, no problem. Yeah. So so everything everything works fine apparently. I never Dude, I'm learning about this with you guys. Everything is fine. Everything works fine, sensation fine. The only thing that doesn't happen is a little semen. They don't go they go they don't find they don't go hunting for egg. That's it. That's it. So, you know, we learn we learn about this together. Bull carnage incoming. I'll tell you the whole process. I'll get more into it on Not the MMA Holes. I'm not going to put you through that here. On Gummy Gang, our second channel. I'm going to I'm going to walk you guys through my whole process. We're going to do this together. I might have a stream where I just cry. Rest in peace, little semen. I don't know where the semen go. Like what does it happens? Like I guess they just kind of like <laughs> I don't know where they go. I have no idea. I don't know. I should read the brochure on air. He's going to mangle my insides. I mean, I, I'm not too worried. It's a very, like the way the guy talked, the doctor spoke. He's like, dude, he's like, I've been doing this forever. He's like, there's no complications. It's an easy process in and out. So I'm like, all right, I trust you. ADHD swimmers. My wife wouldn't touch me after our second. If I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so your wife is like, okay. Oh, so K-Dog, you got it done. Okay. K-Dog, talk to me more. Tell me more about this. We need another one. Because I was thinking I was the only one in this fucking chat. I'm like, how could there be 130 people watching and I'm the only idiot doing this? Apparently, Boston, yeah, feels exactly the same. There's no difference. No, no difference. Everything's exactly the same. Yeah. So this guy over here, Timothy Cucumber... Oh, God, his nickname is Twilight. I'm definitely not rooting for him. But he's uh, Mar Marvin Vittori's talking about him. So I guess he's Extreme Couture. He trains out of Vegas. So, yeah, probably. So this is going to be the next fight. Timothy Cucumber versus uh, Matteo Vogel, who looks familiar. A Vogel, CFFC. Why did I see this guy before? Vogel. Matteo Vogel from Canada. Hmm. That sounds familiar. I, guess, I don't know. I'm thinking of someone else, I guess. Don't cry, daddy cowboy. What? Life's way better. No, She's not worried. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it for more for Jess. Cause she could get her tubes tied, but there's a lot of complications with that. Like, that's like really a fucked up, mangled. That's it. That's like a... Like, if you ask your wife to do that, you're like, I don't know. That's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. The process is really screwed up, what they do. So, I'll take one for the team. I'll be a real man. Not afraid of no snip snip. No, I'm lying. I am. 5-9 uh, versus 5-8 Vogel. Vogel and Cucumber. 145. The weight. 24 years of age for Kwamba. Uh, let's see. A 24 age. A 27 for Vogel. 71 inch reach for both guys. Both orthodox as well. Okay, last similarities. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The favorite is from Canada, so Matteo Vogel is the favorite in this one. 
I'm sorry, Cucumber, but I can't root for you. Even though you're from the U.S., your nickname is Twilight, the worst franchise of all time. If anyone swears by, if anyone likes Twilight, get out of my chat and me unsubscribe and leave. Did Patrick Gavia just subscribe to the channel? It took you this long to subscribe, Patrick. Come on, Patrick. Pull it together. Patrick Gavia tomorrow night, live on the show. Let's go, champs. Best documentary guy out there. And we've had Will Harris on. And I'm still going to stand by it. I'm still going to stand by it. Will Harris is the man. But I tell you what, Patrick Gavia's got really good documentaries. Oh, right, here we go. Body shots. Kawamba's letting him go. Now Vogel shoots in for the takedown. Going for the lock around the body, up high on the crotch. Patrick Gavia jumps into the chat while I'm talking about getting snipped. <laughs> He's like, what kind of show am I going on? <laughs> what am I going What kind of nonsense did I just sign up for? So Vogel has a strong control against the fence here. Vogel looking for the takedown, high up on the crotch. Cucumber with a good defense, staying upright. Vogel getting busted up. All right. Yeah, it looks like he wants no part of those hands. So Vogel is working against the cage some more here. And Kwamba is trying to circle off the fence. Vogel 8-2-0. and Oh, he gets away. Kwamba gets away, separates back to the middle, throws out the jab. Kwamba, Twilight 6-1-0. and Whoa, Kwamba goes stumbling down to the ground. Vogel trying to push him up against the fence. And Kwamba separates again. Stuck against the cage. Bounces off. Kwamba with the 1-2. Nice blast to the face. Kick to the body by Vogel. And Vogel counters in with a left hand, right hand. Three minutes on the clock. Kwamba circling, showing a little damage. Eats the leg kick. Gives a leg kick back to Vogel. Kwamba grabs the leg of Vogel. Pogo stick Vogel. Oh, nice headshot. The leg comes in. Vogel shoots him for a panic takedown. And beautiful sprawl by Kwamba. Kwamba draped over him. Vogel trying to muscle him to the fence and can't get him there. So Vogel having problems getting him to the ground. Kwamba with good defense. Kwamba has stopped five takedowns. Outside leg kick by Vogel. So we got 228. We're watching the contender series. It's been very good. Two carnages. We're in the third fight on the card. And these guys have really shown up tonight. Looking like Contract City. As Vogel lands a very nice combination. Kwamba is not even phased though. Vogel tries to come up with a head kick, and then Kwamba with the kick to the body. 2.07 on the clock. Moss is getting his tubes. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I am. Well, actually, no, I'm getting him separated, not tied, separated. And he's going to he's gonna quarterize it with a lightsaber. Oh, nice left hand by Vogel. Beauty, best shot of, oh, head kick by Vogel. Just grazes off the temple. Vogel having some moments. Now Vogel walking forward, 145 on the clock, P plenty of time left, damage on the right side, on the temple, and then Quambo, Quambo comes in with the 1-2, Vogel trying to leap in, Quambo grabs him, spins him to the fence, then separates. So Quamba has a very interesting name, nice right hand straight to the face, Quamba lands, Vogel tries for that head kick again, right off the lips, 120 left, beautiful straight right by Quamba. They're going back and forth here. 32 to 23 in favor of Vogel with the strikeage. I think Vogel, oof, beautiful right hand by Kwamba. I was going to say, I think Vogel has spun the momentum in his favor. Kwamba with a good leg check. Body shot by Kwamba. Left hand, then there's a leg kick by Vogel. Nice leg kick by Vogel. Didn't check that one. Now Vogel has landed 11 leg kicks. Kwamba trying and give it back. He does. Nice left hook. By Vogel. Man, good round. Beautiful right hand by Vogel, followed by the kick to the body. So Vogel's really turning it up now. He's like, let's go. And Kwamba throws the jab in there. Vogel hits him with the left. Vogel comes upstairs, blocked, and then fires in with the left hand. Beautiful leg kick again by Vogel. So Vogel's leg kicks really, really causing damage on the left leg of Kwamba. Kwamba circling to the other side, trying to avoid the kick. As Vogel, oh, Kwamba slips as he comes in with a high kick and then gets greeted by a right hand. Vogel has control against the fence. So with all these leg kicks, mixing up the striking, Vogel will eventually get this thing down to the ground. I think that's guaranteed. But we got seven seconds left, and so far, Kwamba has stayed upright. I, th I do think he lost that round, though. Vogel lifts. Doesn't get him down. Okay. So that's one round in the book. Vogel should be up one zip, in my opinion. 
What do you guys think? Should I make a rest in peace my sperm donation? What do you guys think in the chat? <laughs> rest in peace sperm donation? That'd be quite the inside joke. Little seal, of course, Carnage, because I'm late. Silverback orangutan. We got the MMA hole emojis. Loving it with the Molina. Rest in peace, manhood. Well, guys, I still get an erection. Still get an erection. I mean, I can still perform. I just don't have any little swimmies. <laughs> Rest in peace, sperm. Like a donation with my head on sperm. <laughs> you got to snip it before you... I don't know. I got to think of something. Snip it with the same chorus theme as a Logan song. <laughs> I might have to make that song. It has nothing to do with MMA, but it's it would be pretty funny if people tuned in and there's a song about my semen. <laughs> we might have gone too far, far with that song, but I'm thinking about it. If people if the people want it, may have one last run to the sperm bank. Nice body shots by Kwamba. So Kwamba's trying to Start off strong here in the second round as he most likely lost the first. Vogel coming in with a right hand and misses. So Vogel, Kwamba, round two. Inside leg kick. Yeah, Vogel looking really good. He shoots him for that takedown. Like I said, I think he's going to eventually break Kwamba and get that takedown. But we still have wide legs by Kwamba. Can he defend every takedown? If this goes all three rounds, he defends every takedown. I'd be very impressed. And Vogel comes in firing away. I like that, man. If you can't get the takedowns, just stay busy. Some guys get, like, very disappointed, and they just keep shooting in again, just diving in, diving in, and it gets annoying. At least Vogel realizes, okay, I'm not getting them down. Let's back to the drawing board. Let's start striking. Ooh, nice left there by Vogel again. Kwamba eating him. Kwamba's got to he's gotta get something going here, man. We got 340 left. Kwamba's circling. He's having all sorts of problems with Vogel. Vogel's game plan working very nice. There's the right hand by Vogel. Vogel trying to set up that high kick, but that's blocked by Kwamba. Vogel did a little shake of that right hand. I'm curious if something happened, if there's a little bit of an injury that he might be working with. 322. Kwamba hits him with the left. So Kwamba looking to hit and move now. He doesn't want to stay in the pocket. He's doing a lot of circling in the small octagon, and Vogel's chasing him around. There's a right hand by... Kwamba coming in, and Vogel's trying to cut him off. Vogel's looking to fight, but Kwamba is doing a lot of moving around the cage, and Vogel looks like he's getting frustrated. Comes in with a spinning back fist that hits off the hands. Okay, Vogel. Catch this guy. Yeah, Kwamba's just dancing. Boy, Kwamba, you're not going to get a contract by doing that. So I guess Kwamba's going to use the fancy footwork and try to catch Vogel sleeping. 2.42 on the clock. Vogel's, oh, there's that high kick again. By Vogel. And Kwambo blasts the right hand to the body. Kwambo's been doing a good job of blocking most of those kicks. Uh, I love my snip. I'd never have it done. Just my opinion. And what do I know about it? So, Johnny Smith, what would you do? Like, what are you doing? You just going to use condoms for the... You could just pull out? Like, what are you going to do? Wait for your wife to hit menopause? Like, what's the plan? That's actually a genuine question. I'm curious. I don't, I don't want to fucking use condoms. Like, what are we doing here? What's the plan? Two minutes left on the clock. Right hand coming in. Because I got to be honest with you. I don't need a kid in my 70s. Oh, you divorced? <laughs> so what do you need sperm for? I would snip it and just bust loads into the single women. Right? Well, then again, I guess you're going to have to wear protection. You'll want to get an STD. So you're still looking to have kids? I think even as a single man, I might still do it. Because that's the last thing I need to, ha to knock up a girl that I don't care about. My hobie's swallowing. <laughs> so that doesn't mean she can't get pregnant. I mean, you're just not putting... All right. Just don't have sex. It's pretty easy. I, I mean, I guess. I guess you could do that too. That sounds like it's not fun. 110 left. And this round, not as much fun here. Vogel's been just chasing him around. He lands a combination there. Uh, Kwamba 
to the body, now upstairs with a combination. I mean, I don't – by running around, you're not going to get a contract, bro. Kwamba's been running. Oh, I can't wait to hear what Dana's got to say about this. Vogel keeps – is just chasing his man around. He's just going back and forth, and Vogel's trying to cut him off. That's annoying. He had a rough first round. Oh, eats a left hand by Vogel. Man, Kwamba sucked. Get this guy out of here. Get him out of the cage. He had a fun first round. This this second one, dude, he's getting peppered by Vogel again. Tries to throw him with the jab. 30 seconds on the clock. Dude, running. No kids and I never want a condom. Body count. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't believe that. You can just hit her in uh, the brown eye. Vogel's still trying to cut this man off. He does land a left hand in there. And Kwamba hits a left and eats a leg kick. There's a nice combo by Kwamba. He decides with seconds left to throw a nice combo, but that's Vogel's round. I would believe that Vogel's up two zip. Vogel's exhausted. Kwamba's nodding to his corner like he did something there. Bro, what the fuck? Does anyone think Kwamba won that round? Like, he's nodding like, yeah, that was a good round. Or maybe he's nodding like, okay... I got to do something? I don't know. Maybe it's like, all right, I'm going to tire him out in, th in the second round, make him chase me, and then I'm going to do something. Maybe that's the plan. <clears throat> I risk everything in the moment. I've been banging my girl without protection and bust them loads in her for the last month. She's getting a blood test tomorrow. I'm a bit worried. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. I mean, some people just naturally... You know, shooting a lot of blanks and shit. So some people can get away with that shit. Not me. I'm a very fertile human being. I can't be doing that. I look at a woman. She gets pregnant. All I got to do is look at him. Doctor always said to me, I might have to just take everything. I might have to actually take everything off. He's got a penis uh -oh. down there and I <laughs> like what I see. Now that's the donation right there. <laughs> He's got a penis down there And I like what I see Pee pee Pale monkey with a 750 He's got a penis down there And I like what I see Pop 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 Pee pee That's the dono He's got a penis down there With no I semen like I see. No semen Pee pee no pee, no semen to go through that pee pee. <laughs> I, I don't blame you, buddy. You won twice with the kids you have. Why press your luck? Yeah, man. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have two healthy kids. Knock on wood. Very fortunate. We're, we're closing shop. Thank you, pal monkey. You are the top fucking dog. Fitting donation for the combo. All right, we're in the third round. New top dog over here. Thank you so much for the support. And the sense of humor and the kind words. Love you guys. So against the fence, Vogel working. 345. And does not get the takedown. Doesn't even shoot. Doesn't even try. Kwamba removes himself from the fence. Vogel hits him with the right. Okay, so we got our first dub here. Wow. People got this fight split. Does anyone in the chat, anyone that's watching along, did anyone think Vogel got the second round? Let me know in the chat if you thought Vogel got the second round. I know this conversation is very distracting. But we got 315. That makes things very interesting. There's someone on Twitter that said, I don't think he did get that second. How do you get it? Oh, there's a flying knee by Vogel. So Vogel a little more active here. 305 on the clock. I mean, excuse me, Qu Quamba a little more active. Excuse me. Vogel's moving in, throwing out that jab. He's just trying to chase Quamba around. I tell you what, Vogel. Even if you knock out Kwamba, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Kwamba, excuse me, I'm mixing these fucking names. Kwamba, if you knock out Vogel in this round, you are not getting a contract. I apologize to absolutely no one. Here comes Vogel going with the left or right. Take this man down, please. Going for two legs. Puts him on a knee. And Kwamba, Vogel slams him. I told you he was going to take this motherfucker down. I knew it. Thank you, Vogel. Thank you. I knew eventually this motherfucker was getting down to the ground. Please. Please submit this Eddie Bravo looking motherfucker. This young Eddie Bravo looking motherfucker. Come on, Vogel. Choke this man out. 
for this atrocious fight that he's put us through. Please. Vogel, do it. 208, and Vogel has one hook in. Can he get it done? I know I definitely don't think Vogel won the second round. I think it's a 200. It's 200, a competitive, but too clear 2-0. You don't think he won, but you think it's clear 2-0? But Vogel won the first. So what are you saying? All right, you're just speaking gibberish. I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Jesse says it's tied. Are you watching along? All right, there's a hook in. All right, or is she just saying that? Come on, finish this motherfucker. 123 left. He's got the lock around the waist. And Kwamba is fighting hands here. All right, my question to you is this, chat. If Vogel wins by decision, does he get a contract? Will Dana White punish him for his opponent? Oh, please finish him. Please. Come on, Vogel. Put him out. I hated the way he fought that second round. I thought it was a good fight. I mean, I really hadn't thought it was a bit, that bit of a fight. I mean, yeah, the guy moves a lot, but he's been throwing some heat. Here's my problem. We're not watching a normal fight. We're watching the Contender Series. So you can't be, you know, doing a good game plan and circle, circle, circle for a full fucking round, you know, and not do much and think you're just going to get a contract. I feel that it's a recipe for disaster. Now, if you're in a real fight, if you're fighting in the UFC, you're on the roster, and you're just trying to collect a win, I get it. Every once in a while, you got to, you know, win an ugly one. You know, just use a game plan and just move on. But not in the contender series. This is not the place. Just keep circling. And Vogel is trying to get this neck, man. 12 seconds left. He's not going to do it. So Vogel's going to get the win, but I just don't know if Dana is feeling giving. I'm curious to see what Dana says about this fight. I'm I'm pretty positive he's going to talk about that second round. But here we go. So what do you guys think? Does Vogel get a contract? I mean, what are you going to do if your competitor is running for two fucking rounds and you're just trying to get this man? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know what you do. DC is biased. What is he saying? I mean, I, I wound up being biased too because I, I couldn't stand that, that this Kwamba guy, you know, the way he fought that second round drove me nuts. Kwamba won two zip. You got to be trolling. I forgot to ask you to open the gate. Can you please come open the gate real quick? Yeah, let me just get the, um, let me just get the uh, the judges score on this thing. I think Vogel's gonna win, but just let me make sure, and I'll open it in a sec. The guy came to the contender series a point fight. That is a big no no. That's a big no no. You don't do that. Okay, here we go. Judges scores. Give it to me, baby. Okay. 29-28, all three judges. This will be Vogel. Whoa! They gave it to Kwamba? What? What? Bro, look at the stats. What? Bro, look at the fucking stats. Dude, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Close. Are you guys on crack? Bro. Dude, are you... Oh my god, DC. Shut the fuck up. You guys suck. Dude, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Let me see this. Oh, do they have the live stats? They don't. Come on, UFC. What the fuck, dude? They don't have the contender series stats? I want to see by round what the strikes were. I guarantee Vogel outlanded him every fucking round. Every round. Dude, get the fuck out of here. Dude, that is, that is such bullshit. They, they, this guy's not getting a contract. Oh, my God. Dude, that... What? Bro, what the fuck? Dude, that is insane. 
That is insane. There is no possible way Kwamba won that fight. No way. No way. I got to open the gate. Hold on. Dude, that is infuriating. That is infuriating. There is no possible way you can say that man won that fight. There's no way you can say that man. That, I mean, what the hell? That is crazy. I understand. Don't leave it to the judges. My man ran in the second round, and he didn't even have points. God, I wish I had it. Per Damn. Give me the stats per round, then. Oh, my God. Dude. I can't believe you fucking won that fight. I can't I can't get over it. Alright, we move on. Well, you know he's not getting a contract. If this dude gets a contract, I will never watch the contender series again. Never. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not saying this because I don't want him to get a job. This guy has seven professional fights, okay? He fought just to try to point win. Like he did stop the takedowns except for the, the last round. Uh, fucking hell. That's wild, man. I won't. I promise you. You, I pro you know why I won't watch the Contender Series again? This is why. Because clearly the chat doesn't want to... Like, look here. Look at our vote. Well, give me one reason not to watch, and I won't watch again. I'm petty, baby. I will literally bail on the contenders, Contender Series. Yeah, look at this. 58% still. 58% of our community. So 50% of our 58% of our audience don't give a fuck about the contender series. They give me one reason not to watch, and I'm out. That was crazy. If he gets a contract for that, dude, I'm out. There's no fucking way. I don't think Dana will give him a contract, to be honest. Because that was a terrible fight, but still. He's getting the contract. My ass. The only the only reason why he would is because what he's is he extreme? He's probably extreme couture. And the fucking maybe because of the gym, I don't know, dude. Oh Jesus Christ! I would, I don't want to watch this guy fight. Oh, that was crazy. I feel bad for Vogel, man. I feel bad for this kid. The dude ran in the second round, and he was getting cut off, and Vogel still outstruck him. Like it's nuts. <clears throat> No, I won't, Scott. I promise you, I won't watch. If 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 Timothy Kwamba gets a contract, I'm out. I'm out. We're gonna need something very special for me to come back. You will not see me next week on, on Dana White Contender Series. I'll play fucking video games on the second channel. I I'd rather I'd rather get high on the second channel. So you better hope he doesn't get a contract. Because <laughs> I'll I'm out. I won't. You don't know me. You don't know how I am. I'm a petty motherfucker. I did, think about this. With Tough, I just stopped fucking watching. My guy Conor McGregor's on there. I could have collected uh, donations and and views and whatever, and I fucking stopped watching it. I will not watch. I promise you that. I'll watch like I don't know. The Young and the Restless. Is that on anymore? So Dana, don't give him a contract or I'm out. Now, we do move into the guy who fought Izzy and Pereira. Okay, so this dude over here, Usury Bilgaru. Yeah, I'm petty, man. I won't, I won't watch it. If he gives them both a contract, <laughs> if he gives them both a contract, I'm still not watching. That, that was ridiculous. A ridiculous waste of time. That was crazy, man. I don't. What the hell? 
When I heard 20, 29, 28, all three judges, I was like, oh, it's a lock. That's nuts. I have no money on I have no emotional investment to that fight. His loss to Izzy were both decisions. Yeah, he still lost to him. Didn't he lose to Pereira twice, too, and, and he beat Pereira once? I don't know. What the hell with this guy? Six foot five, middle eight. I mean, I don't know. I guess his hype? I don't know. He's on a two fight win streak, two knockouts. Uh, lost to Muhammad Oseli, Samir Zaid E. One, Ahmed Sami lost a split decision. So from the Netherlands, he's 31 years of age. We have another young man, kickboxer. They're trying to find more talent in the Izzy Pereira universe. And then you got Marco Tulio Matutu, who's from LFA. And he is what, six foot, 74 inch reach? Man, this guy's got 70. This is a big dude, though. 79 inch reach. That's pretty wild. He gets not who which which guy are you going for? Uh, do you think Dana's tips off the judges and refs? I feel like these are some crazy decisions. The, the, the decisions have been very bad. There have been some really head scratching. I, I think get rid of the freaking ten point scoring system. Just shake it up, man. Oh, super chat. Get everyone on the same page, and we'll have a better scoring. He will get a contract. Dana loves cheap labor. <laughs> I think. I have a feeling, just by how that second round went, God, if he gets a contract, I'd be bummed. I'd be bummed because I'll never watch the Contender Series again. Uh, we find out who gets a contract after two more fights. Two more fights. So now you're really going to want to stick around because you're going to find out if I'm ever going to watch the Contender Series again. You're going to have to really stick around. The drama. See you later. Contender series. So yeah, two more fights. This one here has got the interest, got the buzz though, because this is the guy, Usri Belgaru. They're showing a bunch of pictures with him. He's training with Pereira. He's got the striking. So we'll see. He's a big dude. Six five. You gotta show the slow motion ropes. <laughs> you know? How you doing, D Brown? What's up? Yeah, he's a pretty big dude. All right, Flat daddy -o. It was nice knowing you. Nice knowing you on Tuesdays. I just voted yes to the Contender Series. <laughs> yeah, yo, get your votes in. Like I said, I, I shouldn't even be here. My audience doesn't even give a fuck about this. You know? I'm here for the 40%. I'm here for the 42. It's not even It's not even 42% care. Craziness. 42% give a shit about the Contender Series. 58%. I'm good. So, it's on the line. That guy gets a contract. That's it. It's over. <laughs> no tough, no contender series. I'm out. If they're going to try to drag me back in, it's going to be something special. It's got to be some some unicorn or some shit fighting. Or maybe a friend from, the, like, if I make a friend from the regional scene, I'll give it a look. Other than that, no soup for you. He got robbed against Izzy in there, second fight. It should be 1-1 against Pereira. Okay. So it was a close fight. Yeah, I got to admit, I'm I'm a casual with this guy. I have no idea. I just found out today that he fought Pereira and Izzy. So Tulio is on a five-fight win streak. Six first-round finishes, I think it said. Anyway, let's go to tail tape before they take it away from me. So you got Bilgaru. Uh, Yuzri Bilgaru. How do you say this guy's name? Bill Gary Wee? Bill, Bill Gary Wee? <laughs> Tulio, 6'5", six, 6 foot, 185 both guys, 31 to 28 Tulio, 74 inch reach for Tulio, 79 inch reach for Usri, both orthodox. I gotta hear how they say this guy's name. Bill Gary? Usri. Say his name. Connor's coming out back on your birthday? Bill Growie? Bill Growie? I actually makes sense. Bill. But Growie? 
or Bel Belgarwi. Glover's in his corner. Oh, he's got Glover there. That's cool. Bearded Glover to share in his corner. Yeah, he's big, man. He made Alex Pereira look small. He's a big dude. Usury gets KO'd round one. Alex is in the crowd. Alex is in the crowd. Beautiful tan he's got. Bulgari. So, they call, so Cormier said Bulgari. I'm going to call him Bulgari. Like Gary Shandling. I'm going to pronounce it like he's a Jew. <laughs> Hold on. Bulgari. They call him Bulgari. Bulgari. I'm going to call him Bulgari. All right, Bill Gary. They got we got Mini Brock as the referee. Let's hope this doesn't go the distance, please. Please, let's see a carnage here, please. I can't handle this anymore. Uh, let's see, let's see. Here we go. Okay, round one has begun. Bill Gary versus Tulio. Bill Gary's a massive dude. He looks like a giant bowling uh bowling pin. Bill Gary switching on the stances. A late kick coming in by Tulio. So Tulio, the smaller guy with the right hand darting into the body. Inside leg kick Tulio. I mean, Bill Gary looks like a grappler's dream. Like he's so long and tall. Like he, there's so much leg to grab. <laughs> you know? I can see like bone. There we go. Tulio just grabs the leg. Let's see. Let's see that takedown defense. So Tulio has Bill Gary against the fence. Tulio with the frosted hair trying to take him down to the mat. Bill Gary with good takedown defense to open with 409 on the clock, trying to fight from off the fence. Looking for the underhook. That would be wise, right? But Tulio defending. Actually, the underhook now slipping in by Bill Gary. But he can't get it, can't get it firm. So Tulio still controlling against the fence here. And Bill Gary's trying to remove himself from the cage as Anita comes in by Tulio. Slowing down the pace early is Tulio trying to drag Bulgari down. There he goes. Round the body looking for the takedown. Tulio can't get it quite yet as Bulgari is defending. And Tulio doing a good job holding him against the fence and not letting the long man show what he does best. As Bulgari is stuck, he's plastered against the fence. That's what I'm saying. Like you see these tall guys. Like you go against a like a, a smaller, wrestling heavy fighter. It doesn't matter how like long you are. It means jack shit. He's still staying upright though. Here we go. Well, Gary spins from off the cage. Good job. So Glover taught him some takedown defense. That's good. So now Bulgari has control with the underhook. And Tulio trying to stay patient. Bulgari separates from the cage. Okay, so Bulgari's got a chance here. A left to the body is a right coming over the top. Misses by Tulio. Outside leg kick by Tulio. We're in the first round of Tulio versus Bulgari. This is Brazil versus Netherlands competition going on here. Bulgari trying to hit him with that straight right. Now moving. Switching stances. Kick towards the chest. Blocked by Tulio. Kick to the body by Tulio. Lands. Tulio throws a haymaker that misses. The right hand. The jab coming the jab coming out by Bulgari. I'm like secretly rooting for Tulio for some reason. I don't know why. Bulgari's weird looking. Looks like a big praying mantis. Doesn't seem very good. I don't know. Maybe he's just nervous. I don't know. Knee comes in. There's a nice knee by Bulgario. Bulgari. And Tulio shoots him for the takedown. Bulgari stops it. Bulgari with the body shot. Separates from off the cage. Is the body shot again. Bulgari is trying to work on that body of Tulio. Tulio now back in the center. Bulgari trying to come up with that question mark kick. And bouncing back and forth. Who are you rooting for? You rooting for Mom Spaghetti? Need milk? You bet on Tulio? Yeah, I'm weirdly rooting for I don't know why. I have no I, there's no reason for me to root for him. I like Glover. 
He has a couple of nice right hands by Bulgari. Bulgari. Bulgari is threatening for a head kick, but doesn't let it go. Switching on the stances. Tulio trying to rip it to the body to work for this takedown again. So pushes Bulgari to the fence. Tulio has control with the underhook and trying to get that takedown. Oh, dragon up high. And Bulgari, holy cow, man. This guy's arm's so long, he puts it down. It's like a third leg. That's kind of crazy, man. He barely had to bend over to put his arm to hit the mat. Then spins Tulio around. So the takedown defense holding up. Good strong lock around the body. And uh, Tulio going for a trip. He rolls down Bulgari. Very sweet trip down to the ground. But Bulgari gets on his knees. And Bulgari tries to get back up. Tulio putting pressure on the back of the head. And Bulgari slowly gets back up. Tulio's thinking about a guillotine here. He's looking for the neck. And Bulgari st he slips out of it. 15 seconds left. Bulgari, good defense. Tulio hits him with a nice right hand. Backing up Bulgari. Bulgari gets right back in the pocket. Tulio swinging haymakers. Man, if Bulgari can hit him with a counter there, he could send his head to the moon. Okay. Ah, uh, shit. I, I got to think Bulgari got the first round. He stopped seven takedowns in that first round. And the one that got him down didn't do much. He outstruck him. Although significant strikes were in favor of Tulio. Who the fuck knows? Let me know in the chat. Who, who do you give the first round to? I'm going to say Bulgari by a smidge. I, I respect the defense. And it seems like from that last fight, defense is what these judges are looking for. You make me feel so proud. He looks like grandmother in a lesion. What? Climbing on the ceiling. Who said buttered sausage? Boo. Can't stop. Won't stop. Like Chris what? <laughs> DC sucking the wrestler off. Anybody from Arizona? Uh, be sure to check out Canelo Charlo undercard as two future world champions. Jesus Ramos. Okay. There you go. little inside info. Arizona style. Arizona, I was just talking about this with my doctor today, how Arizona's got some serious talent coming out of this state. Okay, here we go. So we're in the second round. I didn't see anything that, I mean, other than the defense by Bulgari, uh, nothing crazy. But he got a round in in front of the boss, so let's see what Bulgari can give him here. As a kick inside the leg comes in by Tulio. Bulgari charges in with the right, misses. Outside leg kick. Tulio is thinking about grabbing that puppy. Does not get a hold of it. Bulgario, Bulgari switching stances, and then the outside leg gets kicked. There's a nice right hand by Bulgari. Left hand by Bulgari. Bulgari coming with the knee. Tulio hits him with the body shot. It's a good matchup between these two. Seems like it's pretty competitive. There's a nice right hand by Tulio coming to the face of Bulgari. Tulio coming in. He's trying to go for that Peter Yan trip. I'm surprised more fighters don't try to go for that. Uh, Bulgari it did not work, though, but I like watching that. It's a fun takedown. There's a nice outside leg kick by Bulgari, followed by the chest shot by Tulio. Tulio charges in with a right and left. Bulgari goes bouncing off the cage, resets, looks for the head kick, and misses. We got 339. Whoa, Tulio walked into a right hand there. And there's a spinning back fist by Tulio, followed by a left. The mouthpiece falls out of Bulgari, and Bulgari backs up. Tulio goes in for the takedown. Bulgari stops it. Bulgari is working with no mouthpiece right now as Tulio has him against the fence. Tulio popped him. Bulgari has the underhook, spins Tulio around to the cage. Bulgari is looking. He's probably going to try to separate here. But Tulio is locking up the arm. He's trying to keep him engaged. A knee to the body by Tulio. So Tulio content with working off the fence. You can tell Bulgari wants to push off, but he's kind of locked up. Tulio trying to trip him down to the ground. Bulgari stays upright, and there's some rights to the mouth with no mouthpiece. Mini Brock Lesnar putting the mouthpiece in. Bulgari takes his time, slips it into the face, and we are back in action with 250 on the clock. Okay, that was a pretty fun exchange there. Tulio comes in beautiful left hand on Bulgari. 240 on the clock. Tulio moving in. Tulio spins, doesn't throw anything. Bulgari resets back to the center. Interesting fight here. This is the 
technically the co-main event, event as a right hand slides into the side of the head by Bulgari. Outside look, a leg kick by Bulgari. Here's a body shot by Tulio. Bulgari trying to kick to the body. That's blocked, but there's a one, two, three. Three punches to the face of Tulio. Bulgari letting those jabs come out, and Bulgari almost lost his mouthpiece again. Beautiful spinning heel to the body by Tulio. Bulgari, oh, nice right hand by Bulgari. Tulio just walks into it, just eats it, and keeps coming forward. The knee to the body, right hands. Bulgari spins him to the fence. Damn. Yo, Bulgari just, just slid in that right hand, and Tulio just walks through it like, nah, no problem. So Bulgari now has the control against the fa fence. Bulgari looks like a cheap knockoff of Tate. He reminds me of uh, the guy from... What's that? Not the... Is it the Adams family? Family? Who's the father in the Adams family? What's his name with the mustache? That's what he reminds me of. Some shoulder bumping coming in by Bulgari against the fence. Trying to grind on the cage. And Tulio stuck against the fence here. Yeah, it looks like Gomez. <laughs> like a really tall, like stretched out Gomez. Like someone took him and just... Stretch them out. Bulgari separates from the fence, throws the left in there. One minute on the clock. Kick to the body, Bulgari. Bulgari trying to finish strong here. As he was grinding against the fence. Let's a couple of strikes go. There's a kick to the body by Tulio. I was a big fan of Tulio back in the 90s, you know? Gangster's Paradise. Tulio, right? Minute after minute. Power after power. Was it hour after hour? How's it go? 30 seconds left. Tulio trying to get that high kick in, but it bounces off the arm of Bulgari. And Bulgari huffing, coming forward, trying for a high kick that hits off the arm of Tulio. Tulio left to the body. And a left by Bulgari. Slipping through to the face. Bulgari with the leg kick. Body shot by Tulio. No, it's Tulio. It's not Coolio. What are you talking about? Rest in peace. May, may Tulio rest in peace. Wow. Oh, nice flying knee by Tulio. Ooh, big flurry at the end of the round. Tulio came in very aggressive. And the boss clapping, liking what he sees in, sees in that second round. Tulio's game, baby. Strikes are almost even. All right. Interesting. Very competitive fight. I will say this. From what I've seen so far from Bulgari, I don't think he's UFC ready. I'm going to say it. I don't know. I think he gets killed in the UFC. But fight's very close. I'm going to just say split fight going into the third. Very close. 1-1. One, one. I'm going to call it 1-1. One, one. It all comes down to this round. How are you scoring it in the chat? Let me know. Sure. Why not? Right? 1-1? One, one? What do we say? Okay, both fighters are getting advice from their corners. You like Tulio? I like him too. I actually would rather see him, his style. I would rather see his style in the UFC, to be honest. He's very aggressive. And he mixes it up nicely. But you do have to give credit to Bulgaria. I mean, he stopped nine of those 10 takedowns. So that's, that, that is pretty impressive. For a guy that tall to be able to stop all those takedowns is pretty good. This guy's all hype so far. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I think it's like oh, silly hype. Super chat. Just by looking at the uh, stats, I mean. It's Coolio Nickel, lol. Coolio Nickel? <laughs> Tulio. Imagine his nickname was Coolio, though. That'd be cool. Tulio, Coolio, Marco, Coolio, Tulio. <laughs> we got to get him on the show and try to convince him to, to change his nickname to, to Coolio instead of Matuto. Matuto is his nickname. It should be Marco Coolio Tulio. <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, anyway, Coolio Tulio, he's starting up this third round very aggressive, working against the fence here. On Bulgari. Bulgari. Bulgari trying to defend once again. Thinking about holding on to that cage, but he doesn't. Good balance. Bent over as Tulio is working on that body. Oh, Bill Gary's not going to get a contract. 
He's 60, uh, 6'5", with 79-inch reach, stopping takedowns. It's easy to him. I think that's even. I think it's harder, to be honest. Um, these tall guys stopping takedowns is very impressive. Because think about it. A fighter with a lower center of gravity can just drag you down to the ground. Work on those long-ass legs. The problem is, like, I'm looking at it right now. Like, Tulio is trying to go for his takedown. He's locking around the body. Like, why is he not sniffing? Like, why is he not trying to go high on the crotch or, like, going for a single? DC, explain this to me. Why is he doing this? He's just locked around the body. DC said something. Did anyone hear DC's advice? He's talking about the takedown. What's he saying? I feel like there's a, an easy path for this takedown. Oh, there's a trip. Boom. There we go. We got a trip. So Tulio gets the takedown. That's number two. Is this going to be the same shit as that last fight where you're going to get the takedown control for the entire third round and then lose a decision? Because I swear to God, I can't. So Tulio got the takedown. I mean, listen, if you're going to get wrestling advice, it's I would take it from DC. He's a fucking Olympian, for God's sakes. Former double champ. I mean, come on. <laughs> you wouldn't take DC's advice? Nice elbows from the top. So Tulio is controlling on the ground. Bulgari exposed. 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 All right. So here, let's see if Bulgari can get back up. Two minutes on the clock. Or can Tulio get the finish? He's on top, half guard. I had to mute the commentary. They were getting annoying. Laura Sanko sounding like a squawking bird. DC ain't nothing, just a load of jelly. What? On top, half guard. Tulio still in control here. 140 left in the third and final round. Bulgari's contender series contract. Slipping away here as hammer fists and elbows are coming in from the top by Tulio. I believe Tulio should win this fight if he maintains control in this round. But who knows? This could be a carbon copy of the last fight, and I'll throw a fucking temper tantrum again. Boy, what a grinder. So Tulio has a chance to get an upset win here two in a row. With 109 on the clock, he is still sitting on this half guard. Now, not very active. But I guess active enough as he's trying to slip in right hands. And Bulgari is trying to defend. Bulgari is just looking very frustrated. More rights are slipping in by Tulio. Bulgari is just trying to hold on to the back of the head and work his way to the cage. Try to get back up. But Tulio is just still on top. 45 seconds on the clock. I would listen to DC's advice. Just don't want to hear him talk. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to say it. You know? DC on commentary, a little annoying, but he's got great advice for sure. So now we got side control for Tulio. And Bulgari is just trying to buck his way back up. Tulio is controlling the left arm, pinning it down and dropping right to the face of Bulgari. Now Bulgari slips the arm out. He's got the cage to work with here. Tulio still has him on the ground. And Tulio about to get the dub. Unless I get screwed again with this decision, but... Bulgari eating right hands, stuck on the mat. Elbows dropping in from the top with two seconds left. Oh, ground and pound. And Bulgari trying to get back up. And Tulio raises his arms, roars to the crowd, drops on his knees and puts his forehead on the mat. Okay, we'll wait for... I would give this guy a contract. I know you say no contract. I would give Tulio a contract. Because what did he do? He came in as the under... And he took out the guy that got all the buzz for tonight. You know, had a solid performance. Uh, I would. I would give him. Tulio, I think Tulio won, but, you know, I thought the other, I thought the last fight, <laughs> it went the other way, and who knows. I would think so. I mean, what do you think? If Tulio wins, would you give him a contract? You wouldn't give him a contract? I would. 100% I would. I mean, he just beat a fucking hype train guy. That's, I mean, I didn't honestly think anything of him. Like, when I was looking at his stats, I'm like, how good could this guy could possibly be? He's just another pretty tall guy. Right? Give him a shot. No shot, huh? 
Six five fighting at middleweight. I had a six foot three lightweight on the program not too long ago. So these guys are coming in tall. All right, here we go. I'm going to laugh at these scores. If they give this to Bulgari, dude. One judge said 30-27, so. All right, Tulio won. Wow, we're on the same page. Damn, one judge had a 30-27. Minkia. 30-27. Glover not too happy, but he's giving his respect to Tulio. And how about that? The guy that a lot of people are probably here for is Yuzri Bulgari. And he just lost. Unanimous decision. Completely. Uh, looked like shit. I mean, he stopped a bunch of takedowns. But now they're saying, I thought there was 10 takedowns. They took takedowns away? Huh. I, I don't know. I would give this guy a contract because he beat the guy that everyone was talking about leading into this thing. So I would give him one. I would. And he just kept coming forward. He was constantly looking for a finish here. He stood in the pocket with a supposed dangerous striker and fucked him up. Cricket is more entertaining than that fight. It takes two to tango. He didn't just lose. He was the shits. Tim Tulio Taylor. He might get one. Cheap labor. 185, not 170. No, the middleweights. Okay, we're getting ready for the main events of the evening. And then we're going to find out the contracts. And we're going to find out if we're ever going to react to the Contender Series again. This is going to be a very exciting night. We're going to open up Sonosi's gift. Thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure you hit the like button. I want you to ground and pound the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe because... We are having Patrick Gavi on tomorrow night. It's going to be a delightful interview. We'll talk more of UFC Paris and whatever the hell else is in the news. Yeah, I've never watched cricket. Me neither. Someone explain cricket. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know the rules. Mm -mm -mm. A podcast Sam Alvey does early lean for Brendan Allen versus Paul Craig. Brendan Allen, Paul Craig, is that an official fight? Dun, 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 dun. He should have thrown sand. <laughs> he, should have <laughs> he should have thrown sand. So there it is, it's the Patrick Avia stream. It's scheduled, it's ready to go. So when this thing is over, it's going to redirect you over to that stream. Make sure you properly place your likes in that box as well. I appreciate you guys for doing that. Very kind. Did anyone make uh, bets on this card? How you guys doing? A couple unders winning tonight. A couple unders. So you got this guy from Brazil, this guy from the U.S. You got Carlos Prates, Prates or Prates. Mitch Ramirez. That is coming up next. USA versus Brazil. Coming up next. You have to be Indian to play cricket. Is cricket the one with the big flat bat? Is that what it is? Because I, I used to deliver to a predominantly Indian neighborhood. And uh, they would play that in the street. The big flat bat. I'm like, what is that? Is that cricket? So, yeah, it is Yeah, it is an Indian sport. They they love that. I couldn't believe it. Kids were playing. I'm like, what are they playing? I, I kind of wanted to get in. I'm like, isn't that cheating, hitting the ball with such a big flat bat? Isn't that cheating? Interesting. Anyone play cricket? Is it fun? It looks like baseball. It does resemble baseball. With a big flat bat. Honey and glass on knuckles. I love the scene from Kickbox. Yeah. Pakistan. Tim Elliott's ex. 
Gina Mazzani. That's fine, young lady. It's Pakistan. Who are the ones who love it most? But yeah, India too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I apologize if I got it wrong from... But, um... Yep. These guys are having nice... Oh, look at these guys. They're eating good. They're at the cafeteria at the Contender Series. Chips and sandwiches. Wow, we get to see the cafeteria. We're seeing it all tonight on the Contender Series. So we're getting ready for the main event, the contracts. Dana White addressing the media. So much to talk about. Guys... Hit the likes. We're at Eric Lindros right now at the ADA. Can you do a little better than that? 150 watching. Let's go, chat. Let's go hit that like button. Thank you so much. It's free. DC just said Tulio didn't do enough to deserve a contract. But did the guy before deserve? I'm curious. What do you think about the guy before? Damn, I don't understand. You're the underdog. You just beat the guy that everyone was talking about. That's kind of fucked. Nobody with Muay Thai tattooed on their chest that seriously wins. Anyone play the stray game? It's about being a cat. Ha ha. Gonna load it up. No. He's talking down Tulio. Hmm. I think that's a little... I don't know. I don't know, DC. I think you're being hard. Usually I'm saying no contract for you. But in a situation where you have this guy... like. When I was looking up the contender series for tonight, everyone was talking about this usury guy. He's the guy that fought Izzy. He's the guy that fought Pereira. He just dominated this dude. All three judges. One judge just gave him a fucking 30. A 30 on the cards. Come on. Stop it. Give the man a contract, for God's sakes. What are we, what are we doing here? Come on, DC. Cut it out. Did you have money on the other guy? What happened here? Are you a little salty? Now, the other guy, on the other hand, he can go eat a dick. Taken off in the second round. This Kwamba fella. Get out of here with this guy. What did DC say about him? Uh, if he beat that overwhelming favorite, uh, then he should probably get it. I mean, he wasn't a massive favorite, but he was a favorite. Bill Gary was, what, minus 145, so plus 115. So it wasn't, like, crazy, slight. But still, everyone was talking about this kid. And no, no one was talking about uh, Tulio. Not that I heard, at least. But who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. This guy, for some reason, reminded me of Edson Barboza. Carlos Prates. Is it Prates or Prates? Prates? Or Prates? Golden Knights are the best. I'm so jealous of the Golden Knights. They got a cool place where they play. They got cool uniforms. They won a quick Stanley Cup. It's annoying. Everything about them is annoying. And I know majority of the fans there, I mean, like, they're all fucking casuals. They're just like, ooh, this team is winning. Ooh, they're in Vegas. Ooh, this is fun. They drive me fucking nuts. They don't they haven't gone through the pain of a Ranger fan. So as much as I don't hate the Golden Knights, I despise them. At the same time, I hate everything about them because everything is fucking cool. And it drives me nuts. I've been struggling. Rangers haven't won since 1994. I've been struggling all these years. And I got to go watch these fucking Golden Knights with all their casuals in the fucking crowd cheering them on. Some people don't even know what a fucking hockey puck is. Trust me nuts. Arizona Cardinals are a joke. I agree. I love you guys. Who are betting on this random event? You guys are the best. Uh, I'm not. But I'm sure there are people that are. I'm sure people got bets on this. I don't... I, I stopped betting on the contender series. Don't hate congratulate. I was rooting for him. I did root for him. It's just the fans... You know, it just drives me nuts. Those spoiled fucks. Let's go Red Wings. I have a little love for the Red Wings. Of course, I'm always going to be a Rangers fan, but I have a lot of family in Michigan, so I have a little I've been to a bunch of Red Wings games as a kid. My family tried to swing me to that side, but they they only they only got me with the Pistons. Everything else, I couldn't do it. I agree as a Blackhawks fan. Yeah, it's annoying, right? Like we got to go through some shit. 
as hockey fans, you know, original original six fans. And then we see this team just waltz in with a cool jersey, a cool stadium, arena, whatever. It's all fun. Bruce Buffer screaming there and shit. They win a Stanley Cup quick. The cops are about to arrest me. It's annoying. It's annoying. But I'll go to a, I'll go to a Golden Knights fan. Be miserable. A, a, a game. I'll go to a game. I would check it out. It lo- does look like a good time. So next time I'm in Vegas, hopefully the stars line up. I lost 80 bucks that I had one on blackjack. I just now kind of flipped. Ah, oh, that sucks, man. Yeah, I stopped. I don't do any, even in my bookie, I don't recommend you play the casino there. All these betting sites, I wouldn't recommend it. It just doesn't seem right. I have, yeah, I have, I've watched this sport longer than Jesse's been alive. That is true. In 1994, when the Rangers won the cup, I marched in the Stanley Cup parade, the New York Rangers. I was in that parade with my, my street hockey team. And Jesse wasn't even born. That is true. It's a fact. That is a fact. Golden Knights are the best ever. Stop it. Stop it. Jesus Christ. Cut it out with those guys. They're good. It's just annoying. They're annoying. <laughs> Darko. No, I was before Darko. I was, dude, I was a fan of the bad boys. That's how old I am. The bad boys and then uh, the the next generation where you had the Chauncey Billups and the Rashid Wallace era. But when I was a kid, the bad boys were the shit, man. They were the coolest basketball team ever. Back-to-back champs, Isaiah Thomas. Oh, dude, I was such a fan of the Pistons. <laughs> Jess is so naturally beautiful, man. I can't say what I want to say here, but yeah, fair play, man. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Bum, bum, bum. All right, Carlos Prates. How do you say this guy's name? I feel like it's Prates. It is true. You're right. DC's voice, whoever said it, it is annoying. I don't even want to hear him talk. I just, just give me the pronunciation so I can mute it again. Is it Prates? All right, say his fucking name. De- Dennis Robin before the tattoos. The worm when he was on the Pistons. Fuck yeah, man. I was down. I had a big poster. I had his shirt. Bill Lambier, Spider Sally, James Edwards, Vinny the Microwave Johnson. Come on. I was obsessed. I wanted to be black so bad when I was a kid. I watched the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was a massive Pistons fan. All I wanted to do was be a young black kid. That's all I wanted. I never got that. <laughs> I would play basketball every day in my backyard. I'd play pickup games. 2004 Pistons broke my heart. Beat Reggie and Kobe. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, everyone picked the Lakers. Everyone. I remember Stephen A. Smith. Put all your money on the Lakers. And the fucking Pistons won. Dude, that was craziness. I'm not black. No. I'm not. But I thought I was. At one point. I was a wigger. I was. I'm not going to lie. There was a stage where I was convinced I might be part black. It might have been the Sicilian in me. I don't know. I don't know, but I had a big Isaiah Thomas poster. I liked hockey too, but I was a big, big basketball fan. Big, big. I do look a little black, right? I get that. Um, Maybe I could say I'm like Anthony Smith, you know? I could just say that. My black friends of the chat, will you adopt me, please? Will you let me be? I mean, felony Charles Bennett gave me a pass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Will you take me in, please? Uh, I was a big Public Enemy fan. I love the album Fear of a Black Planet. I mean, I'm telling you. I'm not I'm not kidding when I'm saying these things. You think I'm joking. I'm not. <laughs> There's no jokes behind the words that I'm saying. But, you know, I grew out of that phase. And here I am, many years later, giving you the tale of the tape. Ramirez versus Prates, both 30 uh, 5'11 for Ramirez, 6'1 Prates, 170 for both boys, 30 is the age, 78 inch reach, wow, to a 71 inch reach, so big size difference, Carlos Prates, used to love Bell Biv DeVoe, now you know, 
She's driving me out of my mind. Dude, I'm telling you guys. I'm not lying. All right, here we go. That's why it's hard for you to find. Okay, for... Uh, uh, that wasn't Belle DeVoe, though. But was that Belle DeVoe? Poison? I guess it was, right? Poison? Help me out. I can't remember. This is why I'm glad no one clips my channel. Like, these other channels, people clip, clip all this stuff. Like, I could just say this stuff and get away with it. You know? I could tell you my past. No one's going to clip this shit. So I'm safe. You know, I'm safe. All right, here we go. 417 on the clock. And right off the bat, Ramirez looking for the takedown. This is a big size difference between these two. Prates, it looks like it looks like he's CGI'd in there. He looks like a big ogre. Oh, nice leg kick by Prates. Dude, what is am I watching fucking signs? Prates looks like one of the aliens from signs. Like the dude is just like <laughs> just pour water on him. Here comes Ramirez with the body, the headshot. This is really weird looking. This is the same weight class? This is welterweight? What the hell's going on here? Why does my man look so small in there, Ramirez? Oh, nice kick towards the body. Nice right hand by Ramirez. Ramirez popping on the face of signs, lifting up two legs and dumping him. Ramirez with the takedown. Another situation where the lower center of gravity utilizes the grappling and easily takes down the bigger man. So I'm saying, like, in the octagon, it doesn't pay to be that tall. You got to be a damn good striker, and you have damn good takedown defense. You got to do those wide splits against the fence, you know, spreading of the legs. Prates took a ride. Got dumped down. So we got side control for Ramirez, but Prates did, he did move to the cage. So let's see if he can get his ass back up. Squad, we're, go ahead, go for it, man. I'm telling you, there's a lot of money to be made. If you just clip it and bleep out all the curses, you'll do you'll make more money than us. <laughs> you'll make way more money than us because we're like demonetized. So you'll do great. Go ahead. Have at it. 234 on the clock. And Ramirez is on top here. He's looking to left let that left hand go. Prate's doing a good job just tying up the hands, and he's trying to work his way up there. And Prate just knees him over. Stands back up. Damn, strong son of a bitch. 2.13 on the clock. We got a fight on the feet again. So Ramirez with wide eyes stops a kick to the head, then a kick to the body by Prate. Ramirez punching in the pocket. Try oh, shoulder bumps to break. Ramirez is a tough little bulldog of a fighter. Coming in with the leg kick on Prate. I kind of like looking at Prates, though, because he really does resemble that alien from Signs. Beautiful left hand counters in by the Brazilian as Prates lands. This is a good fight. Kick to the body by Prates. Inside leg kick by Ramirez. I don't know who I want to win more. They're both good. Inside leg kick by Ramirez. Nice straight left by Prates. A knee to the body. A left hand by Prates. I I'm probably saying this guy's name wrong, but Prates sounds about right. There's a right hand again. Kick to the body, followed by the right. Woo! Let's go, Ramirez coming in with a nice combo. Man, oh man, both of these guys having big moments here in the first. That's what I'm talking about. These guys want the contract. Prates comes in, beautiful left. Moving in on Ramirez. Ramirez ready to blast away with a counter. You can see he's loaded up. Oh, nice left hand by Prates, followed by the right. Prates smooth with the striking, hands down too. Coming in, relying on that long reach. Head kick blocked. Left hand counters in by Ramirez. Ramirez tags him with a nice right. Spins off the cage. 50 seconds on the clock. A fun welterweight main event here between Prates and Ramirez. Prates throw that left in the right hand. Ramirez got a chin. Backs up trying to fire from off the fence. Yo, Prates planted him with a combo. Nice knee to the body. Prates got some cool striking. Left hand comes in. Beautiful knee again. Left over top. Counter right by Ramirez from off the fence. 23 seconds left. Tuesday night contender series. And we got ourselves a good scrap here. They're against the fence. Prates in control. With 15 on the clock. Both guys getting a little breather here. Ramirez punches off. And Prates comes in like a fucking monster. Comes in with the kick to the lateral, the knee to the body, the elbow coming in by the Brazilian. Two seconds on the clock. Loving it. Beautiful round. 
So, Green Day, Savage Garden, good night. After I was the Wigger, I became complete white trash. Like, I literally, I went from, like, dude, I went, like, I listened to everything throughout my whole life, but I made a, a hard turn at, like, high school. I went on my senior trip, and everything changed. I started rocking No Fear. The Jenkos came out. I, like, did this weird flip. Yeah, rap to grunge. And then that's why when Rap Rock came out and like Limp Biscuit came out and that, what is that called? Uh, new Metal came out. I, I, f I fell right into that, you know, because I liked both genres. So, but I got into like real heavy shit then. Yeah, so I, I, I've been through a lot of different phases. I was very confused. I, once I realized when I was getting my ass kicked in basketball, I realized I'm not quite black. So I had to, I had to turn into, I had to embrace my whiteness. You know, yeah, new, dude, yo, don't, I still to this day listen to new metal. I think it gets un, I, there is an unjust slam of new metal. I still fucking rock new metal, man. Bands need to come out with some more new metal. I am, I am a big, big uh, advocate of that genre of music. People slamming on that shit. That was, that was some error. Just a, a bunch of angry fucking honkies. Shithead white, white kids <laughs> in the mosh pit. Just beating the fuck out of each other. What a what a what a time. Yo, corn, I was obsessed with corn. I had the fucking braids, the whole deal. Started a band. I was nuts. Yeah, I made a complete uh, pivot. Anyway, enough about me. It's more about the fights here. We're in the second round. We got a good one going down. Prates versus Ramirez. Prates trying for that leg kick. Ramirez coming in very strong. Moving the head around. Prates hits him with the right. Ramirez is like, yo, give me those legs. Prate spins back to the middle, says, you can't have my legs. As a front king kick comes in, a right hand by Prates. Ramirez circle in the cage. It's a small one. Not many places to go. And Prate's on him, rights and lefts coming in, right to the face of Ramirez. Damn, Ramirez got a chin. Oh, there goes the chin. Done. Left hand. Ramirez goes down. And did he call the fight? That's it. Wow. Just when I said Ramirez got a chin, Prate says, whoa, 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 chill, chill. And what did the cameraman did? They just zoomed in, so I couldn't even see if the ref fucking stopped it. Dude, that was terrible camera work here. Please show that again in an open angle so I can, I can, can I see a better shot? Like, that was horrific. Dude, beautiful knockout. What the, was the cameraman drunk? We had no idea if that was a finish. Yo, Prate is getting a contract. That was smooth. Holy fuck. Just when I was like, yo, this kid's got a chin. Like, right on cue. Body shot, left hand. Hold on. This is not the sequence, though. Give me the sequence. Ooh, that left hand was nasty. See, this is the angle. That's what we should have shown originally. So he kicks to the body. Project comes up. Bang! Oh, my goodness. Let me see this again. Woo! Yo, dude, the power that he generated with that left hand, it's not like he fucking stepped into it. He literally just did straight left, just just to the face, all upper body, didn't even turn into it. It was just like, bink, you're dead. Holy smokes. Dude, that was a beautiful carnage. Dana White trots off to the back like, well, we know who's getting a contract. That guy, come on, hit him with the carnage. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Carnage! Lick the carnage! Embrace the carnage! Go on a date with carnage! Vote for carnage! Make babies with carnage! Play jokes on carnage! Masturbate with carnage! Ejaculate the carnage! Propose to the carnage! Enjoy pancakes with the carnage! Celebrate the carnage! Wow. Hey, if you're that much of a favorite, you gotta make sure you get that finish. And they all got dork glasses on. What's that about? They're all wearing nerd glasses. I don't know what that's about. It's so weird because there was a nurse doing the same thing. What's that? Wait, is there something? Is there something going on right now with those nerd glasses? Because there was a nurse in the office that was walking around with black glasses and a white tape in the middle. Is there something? Is there like something going on? Is there like a nerd explosion that's going on? What's happening here? Is there some TikTok thing that I'm missing? Because there was a nurse in the office, the same thing with those fucking glasses. What's happening? Is there like a... 
Is there is there like some sort of phase that I'm missing? Dude, that's fucking bizarre. His whole team had the glasses. It's nerd day. Is it nerd day? Maybe it is. Maybe it's a nerd day. <laughs> Revenge of the nerds. Let's see. It, it, <laughs> is it National Nerd Day? <laughs> when is National... <laughs> I'm going to look it up. When is National Nerd Day? Ah, it's January 9th. So what's going on? I'm so glad I didn't... Like, I know nerds are cool now. I'm so glad I didn't... I mean, I was kind of a nerd in school. Not really. I didn't think about it. No, I wasn't a nerd. I wasn't smart. <laughs> I like sports. I guess I wasn't. Hope Dana doesn't give him a contract just because of his dumb glasses. I don't know. Some, there's something I'm missing because, like I said, there was a nurse walking around with the same thing. The white tape in the middle. Yeah, oh yeah, you know there's a nerd day. There's a day for everything. There's a day for everything. So I knew there was a day. I just didn't know when it was. Turd day. Man, I remember in high school, like, there were the cool kids, there were the nerds, and then there were, like, the dirt bags that were kind of in the... I was in the dirt bag. Like, I remember when we had our senior trip, like, the buses had, like, the cool kids, the nerd bus, and then the, the fucking dirt bag bus. And I was in the dirt bag bus. <laughs> we were... It was so funny because, we're like, we were, like, riding the crowd... Like everyone was fucking like like moshing and riding the crowd in our bus, and you're looking at all the other buses, and they're all just like just chilling. I was in that dirt big bus with my no fear hat on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this nerd thing. Maybe that's his shtick. His name is Carlao. All right, so we're gonna wait for Dana White and his contracts, and then we'll listen to the boss talk about um, talk to the media. We'll have him on the program. Big ending, big finale to the show. We'll open up Sonosi's gift. Thank you guys for stopping by. I bet you were a cool kid. You have the energy of a popular high. I, I, no, I was in the middle. Like, I got along with everybody. Like, I wasn't like the, the super cool kid. I was always the guy with the broken bones. Like, I always broke something. I had, like, every school picture I had a sling on or some shit from fucking sports. So. A teenage dirtbag baby. <laughs> yeah, I was I, I was big into the grunge thing. I like that era. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I don't take no offense to it. Yeah, I'm just, I, like I was kind of like in the middle. I was in the middle of everybody. I never really had any enemies. Okay, here we go. Contract time. Get ready. I might not watch the contender series anymore. Two to one underdog. Muay Thai world champion. He's coming in. Come on, he got the knockout. Couldn't have done any better. You're in the UFC. Okay, there we go. Congrats. Right, right move. He was the favorite. He got submission in the second round over a big flubby. All right, here we go. This guy's getting a contract. Dana looking slim, man. That's crazy. Dana looking like he's looking like a uh, like a, a lightweight right now. Twenty eight. You're in your prime. Get in here. All right, he's in. All right, we knew that. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. Don't do it, Dana. Don't do it. Oh fuck. You need more experience. Not today, kid. I was right. We still watch the Contender Series. Dana, you fucking save face right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank fucking God. Jesus. We, we still watch the Contender Series. Uh-oh. 
He didn't make me say I have to have him in the Dude, are you kidding me? Wow. Yo, he just he just dumped that. Yo. <laughs> he just dismissed this dude. He's so pissed that Bulgari lost. He's so pissed that he just dismissed the dude that beat him. Oh my god, savage. All right, this kid's getting a contract. Oh my god, dude. Just shit on that dude. Oh my god. This kid's calling him Anderson Silva, this guy. This guy is pretty good. Um, whoa. All right, he's in the he's in the house. Okay, in the UFC. Dude, yo, pump the brakes. Okay. All right. I could understand. I could totally understand not letting him in the UFC. Okay, fine. If, if you didn't think he did enough to be in the UFC, fine. He didn't give him any spiel. He didn't give him any build-up. Bro, say you want... Usury in the UFC without saying you want usury in the UFC. I mean, come on, bro. Come on, bro. You clearly upset about that. This dude's crying over there on the side. Are you fucking kidding me? He was the underdog. He won on all three judges' scorecards. He beat a guy that's a scary dude that hung with Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya. Dominated, and you don't give him a contract. <laughs> the contender series is back. It's back. It's back. Dana is back to his dick ways. He doesn't even want the cheap labor. Wow. Dude, that's fucking... That blows my mind. I did not expect that. Now, I did expect the uh, the last one, and I'm glad it went that way because if, if Kwamba... Uh, here's what I don't understand. He was sucking this guy's dick, and he says, now is not your time. Let me be honest with you, Dana White. This guy looked like trash in that cage. What are you fucking talking about? You sucked his dick and said, hey, it's not going to, you know, you still have time. And then you have the fucking balls to just say two words. The dude's crying in the back. You say two words. He dominated. Dude, Dana's back at being an asshole. Oh, my God. That's amazing. All right. So we're going to, I'm going to queue up. He's back. He's back to being a fucking scumbag. Dude, no shame in Dana's game. Holy shit. I'm like legit shocked. Wow. Dude, just kicked him to the curb. Said, hey, I, you know what? You beat the guy I wanted to be in here. Ah, eh, go away. You're not the guy that was supposed to win. Just go away. Get this guy out of here. Dana White. Dana White doing his thing. All right, let me cue up this. So he should be talking to the media very soon. Okay, so we're going to give him a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. we, I miss that, Dana. I miss jerk off Dana. I miss Dana. The Dana White. That's the Dana I miss. All right, so they're saying 15 minutes until this thing starts. So Dana's going to address the press. I hope it's not, you know, Dana, get in there. And get out. I'm not impressed with your performance. Yeah. Dude, he clearly wanted that other guy to be in there. He didn't even sugarcoat it. He's like, motherfucker, you weren't supposed to win, so you're not getting a contract. I wonder if he knocked him out if he would have gave him a contract. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, dude, it's so fucking funny, man. I went to just uh, go over to YouTube I was about to click out of the window, and the first thing I, that pops up, yeah, MMA hole sucks. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, we have so many people that still hate us. It's it's so amazing. I love it. I do, like. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. There are so many people that are upset that I have this chat on subscriber only. Because they can't, they 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 won't subscribe to us. They hate us so much they won't subscribe to Troll. And it's such a funny, it's such a funny power trip that we got over here. Dude, it's so it's so great. I love being hated. Dude, it's it's such a compliment to this community that they 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 despise us so much that they won't even hit subscribe. Even though you could immediately unsubscribe to get your comments in, they still won't do it. Whew.
Baby, we did it. We did it. Since 2016. We did it, baby. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years of triggering the internet and still doing it. People are still upset by us. Woo! It's a good feeling. It feels nice. This is my dad's belt, by the way. His goat milk belt. That's a fucking fine belt right there. So we got our new website. I put in a new graphic for it. We got the wheels still rolling. Uh, October still the date where we're going to drop that website. And I got to be honest with you guys. I'm feeling good. Website going to hit the internet. Channel still growing. I'm telling you, we are unstoppable over here. Absolutely unstoppable. And it feels nice. It feels very, very nice. It feels very nice to be the premium MMA show on the internet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's wait. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. You're good enough to be. Okay. All right. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And now we move over. Now we move over to this. Okay, hold on a second here. All right, Dana White's Contender Series. Dana, Dana is, he's wasting no time. All right, so the Contender Series. Let's do this. How about this? Whoops. Okay, let's bring Dana in. Dana, come on, let's get you in here. We got places. We got Sonosi's gift to open up. By the way, if you guys want to send us anything, we have an address in our link tree. And our an address in our link tree. If you want to send anything to the MMA holes, we're going to open up the gift from the mighty Sonosi after Dana White talks to the MMA holes. Okay. So give me a second here. Okay. Let's do this. Give me a second. Let's just cue Dana up here. I'm just pulling him in. God, it makes me feel so so good that people still can't stand us. In your head, in your head, zombie, zombie. Okay, here we go. Obviously, you're good enough to be here. They chose you, the matchmakers whom I have confidence in and the guys that I listen to brought you here show me and everybody right now who are you what do you got tell make me make me say i gotta have them in the ufc tonight right that's it if you don't do that then when did that change because we were we were literally two weeks ago we were just bitching and complaining about dana going soft what happened when when did this happen because like you were not doing this a couple of weeks ago. Now, all of a sudden, it just conveniently happens when the guy you wanted to be in the UFC does not win the fight. Is that what happened? I'll take it. I like Dickhead Dana. I'm, I'm a fan. You know, it doesn't happen tonight. Right, sorry. Like Laura was saying, it, it's not like it can't happen down the road. Just not happening tonight. Right. Uh, all right, let's ask. <laughs> I knew it. It's just not happening tonight. You beat the guy that was supposed to be in the UFC, so it's just not happening tonight. Like, it can't happen down the road. Just not happening tonight. I, yo, he wanted that guy in here so bad. He wanted that guy to win. Oh, that's so funny, man. Right. Uh, all right, let's ask about the people that you got in. Bellagio, he started the night off. Uh, would he be kind of the MVP of the night? Well, I would say the main event was the MVP of the night. But um, obviously, Oki's a, a, a close second. I mean, you know, he beat a Muay Thai world champion, kickboxing champion, and did it striking. And, uh, you know, listen, he, he was a two-to-one underdog. Nobody told him that. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he, he didn't get the fucking memo. He went out there 
and fired away, and anything can happen in a fight. You see it every Tuesday in this place. Two to one, three to one, four to one dogs winning because they want to win. Is that the kind of example you would give the people to be like, hey, watch that performance? Because, I mean, he did, it was just all out aggression. Like, we're not, we're not trying to save anything for the third round. Every performance is different. There's, there's been decisions that I've taken, guys. It's not like, oh, you got to come in and finish spectacularly and you got to be a three to one dog. It depends on the fight. It depends on how you fight. It depends on, you know, there's a lot of different factors uh, into in how I decide whether you should be here or not or whether I want you here or not. Yeah, we know this. Uh, we know. <laughs> we know what it is and keep it up Dana because this is my this is my contender series this is what we want we wanted you to go back to the roots a couple years back contender series ruthless this is what we need and you know what this goes to show you that Dana listens to the fans there are people out there I'm sure like us that have been complaining saying hey man What's going on here? Back in the day, there was some like edge to this where it's like you don't know if they're going to get a contract. That's what made the show fun, you know? And then all of a sudden, you just started signing everybody. So now Dana's starting to go back to the old ways. I like this, Dana. Keep this going. Uh, I did what I- and there's no doubt about it, he was upset that that guy flopped. And if that had to happen for Dana to be a prick, well, let's go. I ask you about Thomas Peterson as well as the heavyweight. Um- you know, obviously, heavyweights tough. It's just tough to find quality heavyweights, mm-hmm. right? Is it? A, is it a little uh, easy? What do you mean? Dana's on the show right now. What are you talking about? How much more do you want of him on the show? Is your bar of entry, I guess, to get in, or, or were, was he a guy that you just were blown away by tonight? Thomas. Yeah. D- total domination. He absolutely dominated the kid that was on the Ultimate Fighter, and you know, has experience. You know, he's got 13 fights. He's 10 and three. He dominated him, finished him, and. Yeah, no, he 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 earned a shot tonight. He, de- he deserves to be here. This guy. And when you look at the kid, he's 28. He's in his prime. He's eight and one with seven knockouts, and performed tonight the way you would want him to perform against a guy with. Uh, I mean, he he was a big dog, but but he's got 13 fights and he's 10 and three. Yeah. So, yeah. And then last, I asked you about the main event because I said maybe Bellagio was the MVP, but you think maybe Carlos was the one that stood out the most tonight? 100. percent how, how smooth that guy was, the way he moved, the this combinations that he was putting together, how relaxed he was. Um, first round, he landed 70% of his strikes. UFC average is 44%. Pretty much everything that guy threw landed. Nasty. This guy is very good. Yeah, this guy was fun, man. Carlos Prates. Um, he looks, yeah, he looks smooth, and he was even in some tough spots. And the way he just kept coming forward, his strikes were just, oh, man, this guy is fun. Walks down, walks forward with hands down, big dude. He's good. That, 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 that kid put on about as good of a performance as you could ever put on tonight, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. A lot of these Brazilians, we haven't talked to them yet, but a lot of Brazilians. Yeah, don't let those six losses. I mean, this guy's got a lot of experience. I mean, how, how old did he say he was? He's, he's 30, so he might have needed those losses, you know? Get him early, get him out of the way, and let's see. When was his last loss? I mean, yeah, look at this. His last loss was in 2019 and won Warrior Series, and then he went on just a roll. Yeah, see, get him early, man. Get him out of the way early, and now you're approaching your prime. You get the contract. This this kid is hitting the UFC just at the right time. Just at the right time have been coming through this season and contender series. Obviously, they're looking to November in the show in Brazil and saying, please put me on there. I want to fight there. Do you know, I mean, has that card started filling up yet, or will you try to get these Brazilians on that card? Yeah, He's listen, filthy. if he wants to be on that card, I'll throw He's him on there. He's filthy Brazilians? It's a job we, can, we can always got room for one more. So if he wants it, I'll do it. I dig it. Uh, and then let me ask you about Timothy Kwame. Like, you have that where you said guys sometimes are just too young, right? So what do you recommend? If a guy comes here, he puts on a great show, and you say, hey, it's just too young, what's the recommended path for guys to, well, okay, let me don't get take off in the second round? He's too round. young, man. He didn't show me tonight. Bo Nickel fought here. I mean, uh, uh, talk about the talk about that second round, Dana. Guy, 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 come on. Give me the second round. Talk about it. It was terrible. He ran. With, with a bunch, not much experience. You know, the, the list goes on and on of guys that have taken – with, with, with no experience. I just didn't see it from this kid. You know, I didn't think he had the power. You know what I mean? His power wasn't fast. Fast as lightning. St- stood on the outside. Fought a good fight. Is definitely a talented kid. Um, he ran! Not, I, I just don't think he's ready for the UFC. You I get agree. in there, and, and, and the Canadian kid was fucking durable, man. Durable. You, did you just call him adorable? 
kept pressing forward, <coughs> wanted to win, didn't come in here just to fucking lay down and go home and, you know, get beat. Um, tough, durable guy, but, yeah, t Timmy just didn't have it tonight. Nice. A couple outside of tonight. I uh, haven't seen you in a couple weeks. I did want to get the latest update on Conor McGregor. You know he likes to mess with us all. He okay, here sent it is. out a tweet. Uh, this is why we're here, friends. December, Conor McGregor. Dana White's about to talk about Chad. Get your p pants off, popcorn ready, dicks out, pussies out. Let's go. Like a, a, an alleged fight pass graphic of him and Chandler in December, end of year. What can you tell us about the latest on, on Conor? And is, is he in the mix for that December? I don't know how that got out or whatever. It wasn't from fight pass. My team was telling me it was an AI. Uh, it looked fake. It looked like it yeah. made. It wasn't real. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if, if that was the case, you you would have heard it from us first. Well, we've seen billboards. You'd have got a report Rams. from me on Instagram. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, is you know what? I, I'm still not ruling it out. It's not like he's saying, like he said he thinks early next year. I think he's still trying to get this thing to work. I think that Dana White is still trying to put this together. It's This is what it seems like. It seems like he's trying to figure out how do we grease up fucking USADA and then... Hit people with a big announcement. If if a fight week is not trending in a certain direction, right? And and he feels like, hey, we need to drop something big. I have a feeling, man. I have a feeling that he is still trying to work on this shit. Because remember, this is mega money we're talking about. This is money that is like it's just gonna be stupid. This could break all of records. Imagine putting him on a on a card with Sean O'Malley, dude. Think about it. There's something a little weird about this. I wish there was a follow-up question. So what's the deal? What's happening here? Are we still working on this? Like, someone's got to follow up. Is he in the mix? Oh, to super out. chat. Patrick, what up, man? Tune in tomorrow, boys. Tomorrow is the night. Wow, Patrick Gavia coming in as a top fucking dog. Coming in over here. Says, tune in tomorrow night. That's right. The stream is scheduled. And ladies and gentlemen, move over. That's Measley 750. Patrick Gavia coming in as the top fook and dog, oh, baby. Come on. Let's go tomorrow night. It's going down, baby. It's going down. Patrick Gavia. This stream is actually going to redirect you over to the Patrick Gavia live stream. It's going down. Go check out. Go binge watch his documentaries. Fantastic stuff. If you liked Will Harris, he was a great interview. Patrick Scott, dude, his shit is on another level. Like, it's out of control, man. So let's go. Let's go, Patrick. Thank you so much for your support, man. Appreciate you. That's that's very cool of you. Right now we have, whoa, <laughs> Dana, what's going on, bud? We have Dana White talking about McGregor. We got Patrick Gavi in the chat. Wow, look at that. Crazy stuff. One's in the chat if you've seen his channel before. I've, I've boasted about it before. One's in the chat if you've seen that channel. It's great stuff. I'm going to watch the Tony Ferguson documentary tonight. Tonight I'm going to watch that. So I want you guys to watch it, and I'm going to quiz you tomorrow. All right. Because sometimes he says he can, then he says he can't. Is Ooh. he even in Connor? Is he even in discussion for December? Oh, here we go. I have no clue. We'll we'll see how this plays out. Okay. Right. So there's the follow up question. Hold on. Let's hear this again. Connor, is he even in discussion for December? I have no clue. We'll we'll see how this plays out. Right. I told you. I told you, motherfuckers. He is still working on it. He said early next year in a, in a previous interview. Now he's still saying, I have no clue. I am telling you right now, from a business aspect, Dana White is doing whatever he can to get USADA to look the other way. He is trying to find a way to get Connor in that cage in December. They have T-Mobile Arena ready. The biggest flex would be John Jones November, Connor McGregor December to end this year. Big flex. He's still working on this shit. I do ask you about uh, Sean O'Malley as well. Obviously, new champion, star. What can you tell us about metrics or just information that you may have about where he stands already as a star? Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about fight uh, uh, the Contender Series when he fought here. He had the biggest numbers on the Contender Series. Uh, you know, the first however many seasons, it was millions. He had millions of views. Um, so we knew right away, and we started to move him that way. And uh, he was, obviously you know the gate in Boston. It was the biggest 
gate ever in the history of the Boston Garden that wasn't the Celtics finals, right? <laughs> Everything's the biggest ever. Everything, yeah. Everything's the biggest. <laughs> I can't, I mean, he could be telling the truth, but I, I mean, it's just like, dude, it's hilarious. Everything he says is the biggest. Like, how is it possible that everything that Dana White does is the biggest ever? Like, when is a reporter going to be like, come on, Dana? Like, is every single thing that you do the greatest? And uh, it was the, it was the biggest uh, bantamweight <laughs> championship of all time, pay per view wise. So um, yeah, I saw there was some talk about me whispering his ear. You're gonna make a lot of fucking money. He's gonna make a lot of fucking money. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that, dude. Sean O'Malley winning is massive. Sean O'Malley as a champion right now is doing everything right. He's hanging with the Nelk boys. He's got does does Patrick have a Sean O'Malley one? That's gonna be that would be a cra- crazy documentary. I got to check to see if he has a Sean O'Malley one. Dude, Sean O'Malley is like the way he's putting up these uh, posts, uh, these these clips on social media post championship. Dude, he's killing it. All his things are getting a gazillion clicks. Like Sean O'Malley, he's he's got his finger on the pulse of social media, marketing, businessman. Sean's he's doing all the right things. That's a fact. Uh, do you have a- got to look into the story? Yeah, that'd be that'd be a banger right there, dude. It's it's crazy. I don't know. I got so many questions for Patrick. So tomorrow, tune in, guys, because I like listen. We do shitty edits on our show. Like if I I can't even get over the editing that man does on that channel. Like it is it is pretty mind blowing. Kind of a leader in the clubhouse of what's next for him. I mean, obviously Cheeto won that night. You got yeah, Rob out there. The last two days, uh, yesterday and today, we have put together fights. All the way up into March of next year. Yeah. Hmm. Care to let us know what that is? Yeah. When I'm ready, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, man. He wants to finish this year strong. He's got fights all the way up until March that he's putting together. They got this big plan going. Nice. Last thing I want to ask, and I don't know how involved you are in this, but we, there was a report that came out today of a letter that you guys sent along with the NBA and the NFL to the U.S. government about cracking down on piracy and hmm. getting the DMCA. All right, boys, this is going to get interesting. Act updated to, to immediately bring down stream. Just curious how much involvement you have in that, what you can tell us about that. We've been cracking down on piracy for years. I've been talking about piracy for 10, 12, 13 years. Um, <laughs> we've always taken a strong stance on piracy, and we always will. Uh, <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, hi Dana. So, yeah. what's the update? Are you guys are you guys catching the, those 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 pirates? You catching them? Because we haven't heard any more bragging. I don't know. I I feel like the pirates are winning. I don't know. I feel like they're winning. Hi. Um, I'm just curious. You know, we just saw O'Malley well, win the title first or second, I guess, from Contender Series. Is there somebody that you think will be the next champion from Contender Series? Well, it's funny you say that because. Um, you know, the war room that we have at the office where we make all the fights. There's a, uh, so on the wall, there's different stickers that go beside um, the fighters' names so that we know where they came from. Red is, is the ultimate fighter. Um, blue is the contender series. And I think yellow is looking for a fight. And if you look at the whole wall, it's all blue. I mean, the whole wall. <laughs> Cheap labor is prevailing. All the all the low contracts, dude. I mean, I, I wish a, a, a reporter, but they would get kicked out. But I wish a reporter would be like, "Isn't it kind of crazy? Like that whole wall filled with blue has the lowest contracts in your whole roster, yet they're they're the ones that are achieving the greatness." It's blue. This show is created. It should be green for the money that you guys are saving. <laughs> um, so much talent from you know top fifteen, ten, five to a couple world champions now. So. Dude, that is hilarious. Like, that, as, as a person that runs a business, that's the first place my mind goes. I'm like, you mean to tell me that your wall is filled with contender series fighters with the lowest contracts on your entire roster? Dude, you are running a perfect business. Um, this show has become, you know, not just something that we love to do every Tuesday night. I actually respect that. I'm not going to lie. As a business person, yo, I, respect, I respect that hustle by Dana. You know, and then bragging. He's literally bragging about it, too. And and that is probably the reason why so many people try to cancel Dana and, and attack him and shit like that. He literally, you know, brags about these things. But, hey, if he can get away with it, can you... If you ran a business, wouldn't you want people working for you for cheap? Like, I mean, of course. 
This shows uh, Dana's version of picking up illegal construction workers in the Home Depot parking lot. Hey, you got five professional fights? Here's a contract. Just, just, just show me something. Show me a pulse. I'm going to bring you in. You're going to be a champion in no time. Hopefully it's within the five year or the three year contract. What's the, how many years of the contracts? Just try to, try to get that belt before, you know, it's time to negotiate a new contract. But here's the, here's the trade-off, you know, all the joking aside. If a fighter uses that, that small contract, right? We've had a bunch of guys from contender series on the show. They take that contract, but they use the platform to market themselves Think about this. Like what Sean O'Malley has done, he could be getting paid peanuts, but he's making so much money on social media. You know? So much money outside of the UFC because of the platform. So here's the other side to it. We could shit on fighter pay. We could shit on Dana White and the UFC for being greedy motherfuckers. These guys are just running a business. At the end of the day, fighters have the platform, once they're in, to do whatever the hell they want. I am now a UFC fighter. Use that wisely and make money. If Joe Schmo, me, the former DJ, the former photographer, the former box delivery guy, can fucking start a platform on YouTube with not one big company supporting me, not one big company that I had to work for to give me an audience, a platform, I had to build the platform myself from fucking scratch. If I could do this, what? why can't a UFC fighter not do it? Think about it. If I could do it from nothing, why could a UFC fighter not do it? They have an actual platform where they can actually utilize. They have a marketing team. They have social media strategists. They got the whole fucking, uh, uh, what's it called? The, the performance center where they have everything at their fingertips. If they can't make a lot of money and they're complaining about fighter pay, which we don't see it much. But if they are, I, have, I, have, I don't feel bad for them. I don't. You could, if, if you, listen, insurance is what's killing us. Insurance is the roughest thing as a business person. If you have a small business, insurance is the, is the roughest thing because that's where we get rates. But these guys, you make a fortune off of merch and, and off of appearances and, and, uh, you know, uh, social media sponsors on top of whatever purses you're getting or whatever. The sky's the limit, you know? So, you know, as much as I joke about the UFC, they're running a business. If you're in, you got a small-ass contract, make the best of it. Make that money, man. Look at Moicano. Like Moicano out there. He's hustling on YouTube. He's doing his thing. You know? And this guy's not locked into one of those, like, small-ass contracts. I'm sure Moicano has a fairly decent contract compared to Contender Series. It become a very uh, vital part to, you know, the organization and to matchmaking. You posted about your home in Maine. Uh... Thank you, Craig. That's actually a big compliment. I appreciate that. I, I look at it like this. What I'm, the point I'm trying to make is this. I don't. I never had the big like. For instance, Ariel Hawani, right? He always had a big company that he worked for. He always always had that other platform to show himself. Luke Thomas, the same. All these big personalities in the MMA world. If you see YouTubers, if you see Patrick Gavier, for God's sakes, this dude is starting from nothing. No big company. And look at the fucking channel that he grew out of that. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, it's, it's a hard path. But if Joe Schmoes like us can do it, okay, if you have a platform and you have a quarter of the personality that we have, you still can be. But Sean O'Malley doesn't have a big personality. He's not funny. He's not like he's charismatic. He's got something. He's got some sort of persona that people can attach to. But everyone's got that. Everyone's got people that they could channel into an audience. If you have the platform, it helps. You know, anyone can do it with the platform. Not everyone could do it from scratch. That's the point I'm trying to make. Of somebody trying to get in. Can you tell us about that experience? What what that was like? Do you fucking think that you're gonna break into my house and there's no cameras <laughs> at my house? You fucking idiots! I mean, yeah, we we showed the video last night. If you missed it, the Dana White video where the guy tried to break into his house. I mean, if if I got fucking cameras, I mean, pretty much everyone has cameras on their house. So I I don't know what the fuck that guy was thinking. Just it's crazy. I don't know. I'm assuming the guy was breaking in to try to rob the house. And uh, my sister and her husband and some of his friends are up there visiting right now. And, uh, yeah, the guy came up and tried to kick the door in a couple times and then noticed the camera was there, tried to rip it off and rang the doorbell, freaked out and ran away. (laughs) And uh, 
they called, you know, my guy who, who, who handles my house up there called me and said that, uh, you know, he's, he's calling me at 4.30 in the morning his time. I'm like, uh-oh, something was going on up there. So I answered the phone and he said, somebody just tried to, uh, to kick your door and, and, and rob your house or do whatever. We got video footage and we're, the police are going to post it in the morning. I said, yeah, fuck that. Send that to me right now. <laughs> yeah, that dude woke up and was famous the next morning. And, uh, you know, the, the Levant uh, sheriff up there made sure that the, they, they had him within a few hours. So, um, yeah, we got it him. must have been drugs. It looked like he had a knife in his hand or was it something else in his hand? What I don't know. It looked like he had. There's a pen for an autograph. Something blinking in his hand or flashing or. Yeah, I don't know if he had a weapon or whatever, but yeah. Listen, whether you're in Vegas or anywhere else, don't fuck around around my house. Good things are not going to happen to you around my house. I promise you that. So, yeah. <laughs> we also just saw. I mean, I've seen your wife the way she hit you, um, <laughs> and you hit her. So yeah, I wouldn't mess with you guys. And zombie retire. I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about him, what he means to you in the UFC. Oh, the zombie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that event was so badass and the way uh the people reacted to him retiring and to him losing you know i still can't get over the mateo vogel fight it was brutal what's your appeal on that i think vogel won i think vogel won yeah i see you charlie i think vogel won i think he was robbed i do no he's one of those special guys he's very special man the, the zombie has you know, not just the Korean fans, but fans all around the world. You know, everybody's got a zombie. I had a zombie t-shirt for, for a long time too. And he's been so fun to watch. And he's such a good human being, such a good person. Uh, I'm happy for him and his wife. And I, I, I wish him all the best in the next chapter of his life. Ask him why he paired him up against the number one ranked guy when he had no business being in the cage against Max Holloway. That's a good question. And you touched on a little bit about maybe who's next for O'Malley. And I'm just wondering, what, what is the likelihood that it would be Marab? I know that there is some controversy of what, him not wanting to, to fight. He wants Aljo to have the oh rematch. What's, the, what's your idea? By the way, that's Amy Kaplan, and she's firing with the Marab question. It's a good question. By the way, Amy Kaplan laughed at one of my jokes on Twitter. So now I can't, I can't make fun of her anymore. Okay, I'm going to be nice to Amy Kaplan. She laughed. She, she took a joke well. I thought she wasn't going to take it well, but she took it well. So Amy Kaplan's firing away with... The Marab question. Now, we know how Dana feels about this whole thing. This should be very interesting. Let me rewind a little. Him not wanting to, to fight. He wants Aljo to have the rematch. What's, the, what's your idea? <laughs> everybody in this room and everybody who watches this video knows how I feel about this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good answer. An answer. Yeah, I hate it. Hate it. And uh, if that's... Why did you even get into this sport if that's your mentality and the way that you think? I don't even want the title. I don't even want the championship. We're friends. We're this. We're that. This is not – you can be friends with everybody in this business. There's a lot of nice people in this business, a lot of good people. This is not about friendship. This is about finding out who the best in the world is. Thank you, Gozarian. Appreciate you. And if you don't want to find out who the best in the world is – this is not the place for you. You should be somewhere else. There's plenty of places to fight where they don't give a shit what you do. Marab is going to bury himself. And we're, we're going to come into this situation a lot. We had Cody Durden on. He says he wouldn't, he wouldn't want to fight Pantoja. Pantoja's a teammate. He's the number one guy. Cody Durden's moving up the ranks. A lot of these guys train at big gyms, have really solid friends. And I understand why they don't want to fight him. But this is going to come up a lot. You know, as these fighters get better, as these gyms get stronger and there's more talent in these big gyms, we're going to see this over and over and over again. Aljo gave the okay. He's like, Marab, just go go for the fight. I, I think Aljo is trying to say, yo, Marab, just take this. Take this fight. Take this. Don't pass up on this. Don't wait for me. Take this opportunity. Because I saw on his podcast, that's what Aljo was saying to him. I mean, Marab is very loyal and it's a, it's a, it's a massive fault at a fault because – if he sits around, like he says, and he's going to wait a year to get a title shot, the UFC keeps moving, and they just forget about Marab. He just – it sucks. Marab's a cool dude, and he's very loyal, but this is not the game to be that. This is the fight game, you know? He's in the fight business. Fucking Marab is going to lose. He's going to lose everything if he does not take this O'Malley fight. 
If he doesn't step up and say, fuck this, I want to fight. Or, if I mean, the stars might have to line up. He might have to fucking fight Aljo. Aljo is just going to bow out. Aljo would either move up or retire before he fights Marab. But at least Aljo's not the champ now. So, you know, Marab has a, a legit shot. Doesn't work here. And I know you said you have fights booked all the way through March. Uh, is one of those the women's bantamweight title? <clears throat> um, we got lots of fights. I literally drew up a list this big um, in all these places. If things play out, you know what's crazy about this shit? Every year, I say, how do we beat last year? How do the fights any get, get any bigger than they did last year? Then we sat in the room yesterday with, um, you know, obviously the matchmaking side and the, uh, the op side on where we decide which cities, countries, and states are available to go. And then they all come in and they, they, they funnel them through me and I decide where we're gonna go. So if things play out the way that they did yesterday and today and, and, and the way that I'm thinking, because there's if, if this happens, we do this. If this happens, we do this. And we're going to have some fun next year and go to a lot of new places that we've never been before and uh, go, to, go to a place I've been talking a lot of shit about maybe twice next year. Hmm. So it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thank I know you. I didn't answer any of your questions. No. <laughs> but that's my answer. Thank you. You didn't, yes. Dana. Dana, right over here. Yep. Uh, talking a little bit about tonight, when it comes to seeing the talent, and you've been at this for a really long time, whether it's tough, whether it's contender series, what is it after all these years that makes you so excited about the next generation and finding that new talent to build the UFC? Well, one of the things that I, that I notice is that every, like you said, generation of talent just keeps getting better and better and more well-rounded and more athletic. Um, and obviously, there's, you know, the sport is so much bigger. And now we're really, talking about Mexico. Yes. By the way, if you, if, you, if you jumped in, Dana White is hanging out in the pool. I got the pool open, you know. Summer's still here in Arizona, going into September, even in October. We can have, it's heated, this pool. And Dana's, he's in it. He's bottomless. He's talking to the media. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, notification bell, if you ever want to see uh, Dana White in the pool. You know, just stop on by, hit the like button, the whole deal yesterday too which is a bit you know obviously Mexico is a big um my big plans for Mexico over the next couple of years and we're opening the PI in Mexico and my vision while I am here I don't know if this will continue when I leave it probably will not but my vision is I want to open as many of these PIs as possible it's, it's reinvesting. And I want a big statue of myself in front of each PI. Back in the sport. <laughs> and these things cost tens of millions of dollars to build, operate, uh, you know, um, fill with employees and, and fighters. And I want one. I want this one in Mexico. We got one in China. We got one in Vegas. We'll have one in the Middle East. And I want one in Africa. These are, the, these are the spots that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at right now. And as, as we go into... <laughs> D-Life. D-Life, it's weird when people are just like announcing their exit from the chat. No one cares. No one cares, but we'll pretend we do. These different territories and, and open these PIs. You'll have the, the, these... If you look throughout the history of fighting, you go to places where living is hard. And, and people have hard times and people come up with rough upbringings. That's where you find some of the baddest people in the world. And, you know, as we get into these markets and start cranking, not every kid that's going to come out of there is going to become a fighter or a world champion, but some will become coaches and jujitsu instructors and striking and who else, but they'll be involved in the sport some way, somehow. And some will just come out fans. Um, and, 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 we are going to continue to do this while I'm here and, and spend this money and reinvest this money back into the sport. Um, like I'm telling you guys next year, all these different countries we're going to go to. Um, you know, that's my, my like three-year plan 
right now. I don't even know if I answered your question. Either, but <laughs> I don't think you're answering anyone's I'm questions. Go off on these fucking rants. No, you absolutely did. I appreciate Later. it. Uh, the other one for me, Max Holloway. You talked about Korean Zombie. I'm just curious of what you thought of his performance. Max Holloway? Yes. Uh, we talked about him today, too, in the meeting, obviously. Um, incredible. The guy has been on there top of his game for so long. Incredible. There's a couple of different options for him right now. One that I really love and we're probably 155. Do, so. um, hopefully I'll announce that in the next couple months. Okay, so he, he, there's one that he really loves. Huh. Let's try to figure out what it is. Because if you think about it, 145, he's, he's kind of done everything and Volk is in his way. It's got to be a 155 fight. What, what would be the fight that he really loves? Gaethje versus Holloway BMF? Hear me out. Gaethje versus Holloway BMF. You like Max Taporia? Because I, I, I still don't put Gaethje in line for a title. I think Max is a BMF. I think that's the fight. That makes all sorts of sense. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Dana owns a fat, long, black root? He jams up with his... What? It's got to be a 155 fight, right? Connor, Max... Well, it can't because you got that Chandler fight in the way. So he says he's going to announce something in a couple of months. Gaethje, don't, you know, he, he should be ready in a couple of months, right? Vittori versus Max. I'm trying to think. What, what else could it be? I mean, DP3? Right? How many times did those guys fight? Three? I mean, he lost twice. Dustin, actually, Dustin did say that he wants to get back in there one more time before the year is up. DP3 worth it after he lost? He's he's 0 2. I don't know. He might give him another shot. I mean, it's not like it's a bad fight, but he did he is 0 2, and, and Dustin just lost a rematch against Gaethje. Volk Holloway, another Volk Holloway. I don't think he loves. I don't. I can't see Dana loving that. It's got to be a 155er. I think Gaethje Holloway would be a lit fight for the BMF. Yeah, it seems like, you know, BMF. I feel like that's in. That would be in the lead. Max versus O'Malley. Well, I mean, O'Malley inevitably will move up, but that doesn't seem like that's next. Jones, Steve, how about how about Max versus Jones? Ronda versus Max. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dana. Okay. Um, with Max winning, um, is there any consideration of holding an event in, in in Hawaii? I know you said, you know, it's just it's kind of impossible. Max Gaethje BMF in Hawaii. Well, how are they gonna do that now with all the? I mean, possible right now, but with <laughs> him being so big, um, with. You know, with this dude, that's this is Alex. He's the guy that like stutters and shit. He just asked <laughs> an event in Hawaii, like, bro, the fucking place is burnt down. What the? Ma Maui right now with everything. Like, is is there any consideration of, <laughs> of holding an event in Hawaii? God, dude, what the fuck? There, there's there's several issues with holding a, a, a fight in Hawaii for the UFC. I think that's the least. That's the least of their concerns right now. They're trying to fucking build back up. What the hell kind of stupid ass question? The arenas, um, the cost of doing an event in Hawaii. Um, but it doesn't make sense. Dana, Bellator does events in Hawaii. What are you talking about? The cost? If Bellator could pull it off, they do it all the time. Why can't they do it? What do you mean by the cost? Like, how am I? I'm not figuring this out. How could Bellator do it and the UFC can't in Hawaii? That makes no sense. You know, believe me. Uh, me. You mean to tell me Hawaii would be more money than setting something up in Singapore? Like, I feel like. To get everything over in Singapore? Like, what? All of my staff would love to pack up and go to Hawaii on a... On a uh, what's on the, a, what's on the a, for, problem? For a week, you know what I mean? Every, everybody that works with the company would want to go to that event. And not to shit on any other place. But Were you saying Bellator has a bigger budget, Michael? <laughs> what's your point? <laughs> I know it's not the same as Bellator. That is my point. It's not the same. It's, it's bigger. It has more money. How does Bellator afford it in the UFC can? That makes no sense. Why? Yeah, what is up? And now, now Hawaii is an expensive place. I know that. But if Bellator could pull it off, I don't understand why the UFC can't. 
Belts is going, I, they're going bankrupt. How, and they still fucking find ways. But it's probably a hundred other places we would rather not go than go to Hawaii. We'd rather go to Hawaii, but it's just, hmm. it's tough to do. I would love to de- dive deep in that conversation with them. Like, what is the, what is it? It's tough to do. Is it the arena? Do you see UFC ever holding an, an event in Hawaii if, if they build a stadium or if they lower the costs? You know, it's funny you say that because we talked about that yesterday too. Huh. We covered a lot of stuff yesterday, and, and obviously the stuff that's going on in Hawaii right now, um, I'm very supportive of Hawaii and the people, and I'm, I'm kind of focused on that right now. Where this we, So for all of you, media and fans included, that, that bought UFC Hawaii T-shirts, thank you. We're, we're over $200,000. Dude, I got to get one of those. I got to get my hands on one of those. Can someone send me one? I'm too lazy to buy. <laughs> I'll, I, someone send it to me. I'll forward you the money. I got to do that. I want that shirt. That's a good shirt. And, and, and the Hawaii t-shirts. And I believe that we'll get over 300000 which will put us at like $1.3 million that we're going to donate to the people cool. of Hawaii. And, and just like we did in Las Vegas when, the, when, when the, you know, the shooting happened here, we're trying to vet out right now. How do, how do we get the money to the right people? Who does it go to? You don't just send $1.3 million over there and say, hey, here you go. Good luck, everybody. We get, so we're, we're, we're working out the details on how to figure that out. And I am going to Hawaii. I'm going to go over there myself and, uh, and, and meet with whoever we end up donating this, the, the, this money to. And, uh, and I'm working on other possible things with Hawaii as far as events go. Just wow. nothing I can talk about right now. Huh. I wanted to ask you one more thing about UFC 292. As soon as O'Malley knocked out Al Jermain, his knockout was on YouTube. It was all over social media. That, it's a rare occurrence for the UFC to do that. What, what was UFC that? didn't do it. Um, ESPN did. So ESPN, uh, you know, bought the rights to the pay-per-views. So they wanted to put that out that night, and they wanted to promote that fight. Um, so they did. Yeah. Is that you think it's just a special O'Malley thing, or do you think that might happen going forward? Um, yeah, I, th- I think that they obviously they saw the star potential in O'Malley that night, and I think that opening it up to everyone was like an investment in O'Malley. I don't know if that's the truth. You'd have to ask them that question, but that's that's why I think they did it. And one last one for me. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but The Rock bought Thimble Grimbo, uh a house. I didn't see it. I heard about it, though. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? It's, it's, it was pretty awesome. Who? I think that The Rock is incredibly wealthy, and he could probably buy everybody on the fucking roster a house. Thimba Garimbo? Who the fuck is that? <laughs> so, yeah, obviously a really nice thing to do. Um, oh, is that that, is that that fighter? That's that fighter, right, that he showed up for? I remember that guy. Okay. I, I'm like, why does that name sound familiar? So that's the dude that, um, yeah, the rock popped in and he had, yeah, that was a crazy story. He could buy everyone a house. <laughs> just shitting on the rock. <laughs> you know, rock could buy anyone a house. Not a really that big of a deal. You know, he connected with him <laughs> through the seven bucks thing, you know. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Interview. It's such a you weird question. how vital the contender series has been a part of the UFC and the roster growth. Also, another part was the Ultimate Fighter, right? Back in the day, a lot of the guys came from the Ultimate Fighter. After these two live finales in Boston, especially the Katona and Gibson fight, are you looking forward to placing these tough finales on big spotlights like a pay-per-view fi- event or even just shining a bigger light on the future tough seasons? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I don't know. We talked about a lot of shit the last two days. We didn't talk about that um, or either one of those guys, but you're not wrong. I mean, that was a great fight. That was one of those fights that people were blowing me up saying, Give them both a contract. They should both be in the UFC. And, and uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, th- those guys delivered on, on, the, uh, on the finale. And uh, so you, uh, you said that you mentioned some locations. Is L.A. one of those possible locations that you guys might be returning to? <laughs> in, in L.A.? Yeah. Oh, boy. Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, not sure if you saw, but. McGregor DM'd Sean O'Malley after he won his title fight against Aljamain Sterling, and uh, O'Malley called for a co- main and co-main event between, or McGregor to be the main event of a card and Sugar to be the co-main of a card. I'm not. What are your thoughts on that? I didn't see that. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. 
It, it doesn't surprise me, though. You can tell that O'Malley respects Connor and what he built and what he's done, and, you know, so it makes sense. And uh, one last one for me. It's hard to put anybody else that shares in pay-per-view on a pay-per-view with Conor McGregor. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, one last one for me. What, what are you saying? Hold UFC on. UFC 295 co-main event, something you're going to be announcing real soon here. Wait, what did he say? It's hard to what? Put anybody else that shares in pay-per-view on a pay-per-view. Makes sense. And uh, one last one for me. It's hard to put anybody else that shares in pay-per-view on a pay-per-view with Conor McGregor. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so he's saying... If O'Malley is a champ, he gets pay-per-view buys, and it's hard to put a card together to share pay-per-view buys if you have Conor McGregor on that card. So there you go. There's your answer. There's your answer. So, yeah. So that is never happening. Oof. Ah, that's a bummer. That is never happening. So if Conor's going to headline a card, which, I mean, should he really be headlining? You know, if you think about, you know, how he's been in the cage. Of course, he's got a headline because he's a, a massive star. Oh, so no title fights on the Connor card. Well, there goes that. Okay, you answered that question. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, one last one for me. Was the UFC 295 co-main event something you're going to be announcing real soon here? Say that again? The UFC 295 co-main event to uh, Jones and Stipe. You want to know what the co-main event is? Yeah, because, I mean, you said a couple weeks ago it might be the next week, and uh, we just haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, Colby. Yeah. No? I have no clue. Right <gasps> it's not Colby Leon, so that ship has sailed? Oh, my God. So, John jo it's it's true then. So, John Jones, who might not want to share pay-per-view buys either, it might not just be because of Colby Covington. He, John might not want to share pay-per-view buys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. All right. Thank you. Thank oh, you. what a mess. Demon. Dude, this is... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That is a mess. Oh, politics. Grudges. That's messy. So now you know why Dana's dancing around all this shit. He can't, he can't pull these cards together. So he's he's got John Jones and Stipe in November, but you got Colby Covington mouthing off, but it might be more than Colby mouthing off. It might be the same situation. John Jones may say, I want all the pay-per-view buys. That could be the problem. Hmm. That could I didn't even think about that until the Connor thing was brought up. So that might be there might just be one title shot with the Jones fight, too. I mean, if you're John Jones, you can you can pull that. Because I mean, you're fucking, you're the greatest of all time. So if you wanted to, you can say, "No, I want all the pay per view buys." So it, it might, it might even be bigger than the Colby situation. Jumping back to Max Holloway, I know a lot of times in the UFC we don't see trilogies that often, but is there a possibility? This this actual uh, media scrum is very enlightening tonight. Possibility that Max and Volk might get another shot. I just think that. Oh, there we go. I think that Volkanovski is so dominant right now. I mean. There's people who believe he beat, uh, you know, Islam. You know. I, I love I, how Dana always forgets Islam's name. Like, <laughs> they're a lightweight champ no matter – this time he remembered. But in podcasts, like, he's like, that, you know, that neckbeard guy. Like, <laughs> he never knows Islam's name. Why is he like that? He had trouble remembering it tonight. I don't know if you throw Max at him again at this point in Max's career. I, I Sausage, I got to be honest with you. I don't think that's all it. The the Colby Covington thing, I, I honestly don't think that's all it. I Now, learning about this pay-per-view buy, not learning, but opening my eyes to the pay-per-view buy thing, it... Uh, <laughs> Angel! Fuck, Angel got me! <laughs> Hold on a second here. <laughs> oh, my God. Angel coming in. Firing, fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Dana White, hold on. We have a celebrity in the chat, for God's sakes. Ah, oh, super chat. Angel coming in with a 20. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> hey, Moss, thank you for everything. Thank you. You're the best. Say thank hi you. to Billy. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Very kind of you. The $20 donation. Appreciate you so much. And got a great channel going on over there. And look at that. Angel has, has de taken out Patrick Gavia and has now become the new... And new. Hold on a second. Here we go. 
Bang. Top dog. Dog. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Angel. Very kind of you. You're the best. By the way, Angel, yo, know, Angel's channel is on fire. I urge you guys to go check out Angel Gotti's channel. Um, dude, I it's been great. Every time I tune in, the it's been, dude, it, like the the drama, it just never stops. There's always a new character popping up and and oh, it's great. It's great stuff. And learning about the Gotti family as well. It's, it's a great channel. So go check out Angel Gotti. Appreciate you stopping by. It is a good time. It really is. Trust me on this. Once you start, once you, all you got to do is watch one, uh, maybe go, go in for like 10 minutes and you'll be hooked. I'm telling you right now. You'll be like, all right, who are these characters over here? And then next thing you know, you're sucked in. It's like, uh, it's pretty wild. Angel's not naked on her channel. I saw that. I saw that comment. She does not get nude. Uh-oh. You know, Uh-oh. I just feel so special. <laughs> B-Man coming in with the 2001. Taking out the I've top dog. A special face. There's Jesse. Attention is short. Bust to outer space. Mind in a special <laughs> place. Uh-oh. GSP abducted me. <laughs> I'm from an alien race. Oh, B-Man, you dirty special dog. Face. Special face. Special face. One of greatest, the greatest contrib- contributions from Jesse, the special face. Sorry, Angel. <laughs> and just like that, Angel has been taken out by a penny, by a fook and penny. Now we got B-Man as a top dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. You dirty dog, you be man. You dirty dog. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Super awesome. Super wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. If you're just jumping in, we got a little Dana White. He's talking to the media. He's hanging out in my pool. Telling us about... He's actually... He's. This has been very interesting, the stuff he's been saying. So we're learning about the possibilities of the end of the year. You know, we're learning a lot tonight. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. I don't love it. <laughs> you could do better than that. That's right, B man. How dare you? Just a penny. Do you love it? No. Then why'd you ask me that? Because people people want to know. People want to know. People want to know. What did he ask him? Hold on a second. Let's see. I don't love it. Do you love? It? Wait. What was the question? You know, I I don't know if you throw Max at him again. Oh, Volkanovski. At this point in Max's career. I don't love it. Do you love it? No. Oh. Then why'd you ask me that? People, yeah, people, but, you know, people in our chat want to see another Volk Max fight. You guys are crazy. We don't want to see that. Want to know? People want to know. People want to know. By the way, Angel reminded me. I do have to get Tell Billy Duff. That- I got to reach out to Billy to come back on. Did Ariel have? I got to get Billy on. Maybe next week. Yeah, we got to find out about that Singapore trip because that was wild. That was a big win. I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> they just heard. Uh, last week, I think Alex Bahia was in the building. A lot of people say that, want to know if there's any move forward on that with the possibility of going against Yuri. And a lot of people are talking about maybe December might be a good opportunity for those guys. I know you guys are still looking for a main event for the December card. For Bahia, who? Alex Bahia and possibly Yuri. Yeah, he, yeah. Alex was in the here. I assume he met with you guys and yeah. you guys were um, talking stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. We do, too. Yeah. (laughs) Tell the people we like that one. So that's what they're looking. Alex versus Yeri for that Jamal Hill belt. I I think everyone is on board for that, right? I mean, how is that? There's no way that's going to suck. Hey, Dave. Hi. Um, What exactly about Carlos, the welterweight contract winner, uh, reminded you of Anderson Silva? Oh, what what did? The way he moved. How how relaxed the he great Mike Perry's in the chat. Oh my God! Was how fluent he was. The combinations that he put together, um, just everything about his whole uh, swagger tonight was was very uh, you know old school Anderson Silva. Is that like quite an easy sell for like narrative going forward? Someone that could you know perhaps follow in his footsteps if he reminds you so much. Or, Let's talk about this know, guy to follow in his footsteps. Yeah. I tell you what, 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 Uriah Hall reminded you of Anderson Silva. 
I'll never, I'll never forget that. But he's, he's speaking, if you didn't see the Contender Series, he's talking about this gentleman that fought tonight. He was the final fighter on the card. His name is Carlos Prates, and he looked very good. He's very exciting, for sure. What's the question? <laughs> is it an easy sell to... Easy know, sell? Forward to... Well, I mean, if you watch the fight tonight, anything's an easy sell with that guy. That guy was smooth, slick, violent. Um, I, I mean, almost everything he threw landed... Uh, and, and, and none of it was wild, and, and it was all just, it was, it was fucking smooth is the only, the only thing that comes to mind when I think about it. It was just absolute, smooth. pure, smooth violence, man. That guy was, was beautiful tonight. Yeah, run this guy's beautiful. fight back. He was good. Um, uh, John mentioned about comebacks with Conor McGregor in this screenshot. I think the Daily Mail had Ronda Rousey wanting to return for UFC 300. Had you seen that report? Yeah, this is interesting. So here's the Ronda Rousey question. And he dismissed it, says Ronda's never going to come back. And then this new report comes up. So here we go. The Ronda drama continues. Or is it something you'd welcome? Who reported that? Daily Mail, I think it was. I think it's been carried elsewhere. <laughs> Are you fucking asking me a question? <laughs> that the Daily Mail posted something and you're asking me if it's true? Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm asking if it's true. I'm saying would uh -oh. you welcome it. Would I welcome it? Yeah, Ronda's having kids. Ronda, you know... Rhonda built this whole thing that's going on with the women here. Then her dream was to go to the WWE. She went there and did everything she did there and achieved. She's made shitloads of money. She moved on with her life. Stop reading the Daily Mail. Everything <laughs> they write is a crock of shit. <laughs> there you go. Well, they're not the only ones that wrote it. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on a second here. They're not the only ones. Uh, BJPen.com, another shitty rag of a ma yo. BJ Pen is just as bad, and this is why uh, these reporters they have to follow up with this shit, man. It's not just look sports Keter. Uh, let's see who else. Bleacher Report. Dana SB Nation. All rags, by the way. All rags. Sports Keter never gets that when they ran the story about us in Bruce Buffer, it was wrong, completely wrong. This just goes to show you. Now, if Dane is telling, well, who knows? Maybe Dane is not telling the truth, but I'm assuming he is because why would the fuck would he not want Ronda to come back? Big cash cow. I don't even see. I don't even see the Daily Mail. Where the fuck is it? Yahoo? Oh yeah, uh, no, not Yahoo. But SB Nation rag, Essential Sports. Never even heard of them. Bleacher Report. Heard of them. Uh, BJ Penn heard of them. They've uh, Sports Keto heard of them. MMA Junkie. I mean, we're not just talking about that one outlet. And I, I hope the media member who's asking this question follows up with that. It's not just them. One more. Any, other, any other questions? One. Damn. Man, media got to be better than this. If you're going to bring that shit up, you got to fucking talk about every other outlet that's that's blatantly lying about this story. According to Dana. Follow up. Yeah. Um, there was a report um, that John Jones requested that Colby Covington not be the co-main event on his card. Is there any truth to that? Not that I know of. Is that what John said? Yeah. It's probably true then. <laughs> yeah, if John said it, it's probably true. Um, <laughs> but not that I was aware of that he didn't want. What, 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 what's his problem with Colby Covington? Oh, I guess Colby, <laughs> Colby went, they have history and Colby. Colby was talking shit about him like he does everybody on earth basically it was colby who said john said it john <laughs> who said it colby said john said it oh got it so it's the dude these reporters are just they're dropping the ball man they don't they're not even getting the story correct not quite john saying it so john didn't say it. colby said john said it well there you go that's <laughs> some more daily mail for you right there <laughs> all right dana what up bjpen.com and all these other regs so basically, John didn't come to you and say, Colby's no. not on my card. I, I don't think John Jones could give a shit one way or the other. I, I'm literally, the only person I've ever seen John Jones truly hate and, and could not stand and would say like bad things about Daniel. was Daniel Cormier. Other than him, I, I, I've never really seen that with John Jones. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen it. I, I, John Jones is at oh, a... And Luke Thomas, by the way. Luke Thomas. He, he's like, I'm sorry, Luke. I'm not going to answer your question. Level that. What's he got to give a shit about anything? You know what I mean? The, the guy is literally the greatest fighter of all time in mixed martial arts. So That's right, buddy. I see you in the chat. Yeah, BJ Penn ran an article about us that was completely wrong. 
So yes, I am talking shit about BJPen.com. I think he's worried about who's on the co-main event. Thank you for subscribing. Sorry, but man. I could be wrong. Sorry, to bounce yes. one last time. Uh, was Miami a city you guys want to come back to? I mean, after that crazy event at, in UFC 287? I think you guys will really like what we're talking about for Miami. I'm guessing it's going to be UFC 305 in Miami, right? 305? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it took me a second. It took me a second. Not a bad fucking idea, though, buddy. <laughs> You imagine Not they a do bad that? Idea. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. What, what are they going to throw in Miami? Jorge's gone. Who, who's a? I mean, you got Colby. Do you think they're gonna they're gonna push? You think Colby Leon in Miami? Then it would have to be next year. What are they gonna put in Miami? What, what else in my Gilbert Burns? I don't know. What the fuck are they gonna put in Miami? Give me help give me some big names in Miami. Who's gonna who's gonna headline a card in Miami? I'm trying to think of who's the biggest Miami. Izzy's huge in Miami. Yeah, Izzy would do well anywhere. So you, you think Izzy? Hmm. There's gotta be someone from Miami, right? Like why? I don't know. Like Colby's the first person that jumps into my mind. I'm trying to think of like who's gonna headline. You done with me? Good night, you guys. All right. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Wow. I knew this would be worth it, man. I knew Dana would be worth it. All right. Thank you, Dana White. Appreciate you. Let's open the gift from Sanusi over here, and then let's get out of here. By the way, we have an address down below in our link tree. If you'd like to send us anything, we'll open it on air. Hopefully, it's not a bomb. But Sanusi has been very giving to the channel. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, inside. What does it feel like? Is it, a, is it a CD? Is it a, is it a Blu-ray disc? It is a mature game. Is it a porno? Oh, I didn't even know this was out. I didn't even know this was out. What? The Texas Chainsaw so Massacre. Ma uh, <laughs> my New York's coming out. I try to disguise my New York as much as I can. I can't. Hey, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Thank you very much, Sinosi. So I guess, what does it say? Two to seven players. Anyone got this game? Anyone got this game over here? Subscribe to a poster inside. All right. Anyone want the poster? Not the game. Anyone want the poster? We'll send it out. Who wants the poster? Let me know. I don't know what the fuck I would do with a Texas Chainsaw Massacre poster. <laughs> I don't know, jerk off to it. Like, what am I going to do? Gummy Gang, second channel. There's a link down below. I think it's in our link tree. I don't know. If you go in our description, you'll find it somewhere. To the Gummy Gang, not the MMA holes, our second channel. We'll be playing. We'll give this a go. I hope I like it because I have, like, I have a attention deficit. Like, I don't know. I get bored real quick, but I'll, I'll give it a go for sure. Very nice of Sinosi to do this. Two to seven players. Okay, so it looks like we could do... Multiplayer on that's cool. All right. Give it to Monica. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe Monica would play. I don't know. Okay. Gummy Gang, unite on the second channel, right? You know what I'm saying, friends? Here we go. Gummy Gang. That's the second channel right over there. I'm not going to give you too much over here. Thank you guys for stopping by. I uh, appreciate you guys. Tomorrow, Patrick Gavio will be on the show. We have a, This should redirect you to that, to that stream. If you could do me a favor... Whoever's in the chat, go hit the like button. Hit the like button on this stream if you enjoyed yourself tonight. If you laughed at least one time, or if you were informed at least one time, or if you got aroused at least one time, drop it in the box over here, and then take that love to our stream tomorrow. Patrick Gabby is coming on. He's got great uh, documentaries. Go binge watch his stuff. Uh, give him likes on his channel as well. And uh, don't be an a-hole. Be an MMA hole. Good night. Inshallah. Inshallah. And thank you, Dana White, for stopping by.